episode. Well, well, well. On this week's episode of The Scorpion and the Rat. Oh my goodness, guys. What is going on? Happy, happy Succession Sunday. What do we call? I mean, this episode was titled Tailgate Party, but I mean, Jesus. This was the couples episode, right? In the best way possible. I'll get to my thoughts in tonight's breakdown. But man, Ken and, and, and Reva having a moment, Jerry and Rome having a moment, Tom and Shiv's fight on the balcony. I was just certain someone was going to be thrown off the balcony at one point. It didn't happen, but it almost did. Uh, I mean, what they were doing was almost just as worse as someone throwing someone off a balcony. I mean, the cuts that they were taking on each other, whew, we will get to that. I mean, what else happened tonight? Um, Fake numbers. Is my man Maddie in the chat, by the way, uh, who's been watching these streams every week? He's always been saying that there was something off about Lucas, and uh, those numbers are fake. Can't have two Indias, ladies and gentlemen. We got Fat and even him and, and Ebba having a moment in tonight's episode. I mean, this was the couple's episode, and I loved every single second of it. It was a little weird. It was a little, it was, you know, it was like with, with pacing and a Tony was a little like kind of threw me off a little bit because we were so focusing on the different couples. And whenever we're in a room with these characters, you know it's going to be fire. <laughs> when they're all under one roof, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. You guys are just getting my initial reaction. What's up to everyone? We will get to the welcomes and the thank yous in a second. I'm just going off the top because obviously I just finished the episode. Who would have known that in a night of couples coming at each other, fighting each other, cutting each other's throat, that Connor and Willa would be the most stable, most successful, and have each other's back pre-election? My mind is blown right now. <laughs> My mind is freaking blown that Connor and Willa somehow, some way came out on top. Look at that. Look at that power couple right there. Look at the, the eyes they're giving each other. That's a power couple if I've ever seen one. But oh my goodness. And then we got them. And then we got them. <sighs> How y'all doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well because we had a fire episode of Succession. I had a, a stream earlier today thanking you all for helping me accomplish my recent milestone. Uh, also, you can't see it, but your boy got a new little sponsorship. I can't wait to share my video, my Succession story of how I went from my dining room table to now I actually have a proper chair to sit in and talk to you all. So we moving on up here on Movie Files. But man, I'm happy to be here with you all. Thank you for tuning in. These last seven weeks have been so, so enjoyable because obviously the show is fantastic, but it's even better when I have awesome people to communicate with and interact with every single week with these after shows. And uh, of course, for my Barry fans, Barry's on right now. I have my breakdown dropping here in a little bit that you, my Barry fans can check out after tonight's live show. Man, I love these Sundays. And we only got uh, eight, nine, 10, which by the way, we will be talking about it. There were some some recent news about episode nine, the finale, which we will be talking about tonight. But how's everyone doing? Hope you had a great Cinco de Mayo. Hope you had a great uh, May the 4th be with you. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you're having a great day. We got Mother's Day coming up soon and, and the summer season. It's a lot of things to look forward to. And I always look forward to these nights with you all. So before we get into tonight's festivities, uh, I might have a special guest. You know, Nye might join us. If not, uh, you know, we'll have him on the next week. But he might be joining us. We'll, we'll see if he pops up in the back room. But I am so excited to be here with you all. I appreciate you guys. And if you could do me a favor, if you enjoy tonight's episode, if you were mind blown like me with Willa and Connor tonight, hit that thumbs up. <laughs> Hit the share button. Leave your thoughts in the comment section about tonight's episode. As you all know, I try my best to try to get to all the comments as often and as frequently as I can. But, you know, sometimes we get lost in the sauce and get lost into talking about the episode. But if you guys do have a pressing question or a comment, again, try to uh, I'll try to read them uh, as often as I can and, uh, you know, read you guys' comments. But, man, <sighs> the rat and the scorpion. What an episode, y'all. And my guest actually just popped in the back, so I will be bringing him in in a little bit. Uh, you know, Nine Nerd, who we had on last week. I'm excited to have him on tonight. But, man, I'm so excited to be here with you all to talk about this episode. So before we get into the breakdown, let me go ahead and invite my guest. Like I said, he joined us last week. Uh, he's been on the channel before and uh, talking about Atlanta. Now we're talking about the session. Had a great conversation with him last week. I'm so excited to have him on tonight to talk about 
the Scorpion and the Rat. That should been that should have been the name of the, the, the title, the Scorpion, the Scorpion Queen. Matter of fact, <laughs> but uh, coming in uh, to have a chat with me tonight is the one and only Nine Nerd Yard. What's going on, man? Hey, what's happening, man? Uh, the Scorpion King here. Yeah, man. <laughs> What an episode. Bro. What an episode. What an episode. I think we talked about it last week when we kind of briefly talked about the, the brief trailer we got that whenever we get these characters in one, one room, one setting, it, it, it shit goes down, man. And, and, it, and it went down tonight. I mean, it was the couples fight, man. It was couples going at each other's throats. You know, Jerry, Roman, Ken earlier with the episode with Reva, uh, who we haven't seen in I don't know how long. Um, I forgot he had kids. I forgot he, had, <laughs> he forgot he had kids, man. Um, you know, Manson and those goddamn fake ass numbers and, mm. and, and Ebba letting the beans out of the What's bag. What's going on in India? Ooh, it's just going <laughs> down, man. But nine, before we get into it again, I've had him on last week, but if this is your first time watching our discussion or live show, welcome. Uh, first and foremost, make sure to like, share, and comment, all that good stuff. But nine, man, welcome back. And just in case this is uh, people's watching you for the first time, man, why don't you introduce yourself and let them know who you are, my friend. Oh, uh, yeah. I am nine of nine nerd yards. You may have seen me covering Atlanta. Um, you may have seen me covering Dave recently on the stream. And of course, I was here last week uh, for Succession. So glad that Elliot is covering Succession on top of all of the other things that you get to uh, during the week. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the the handle is nine nerd yards on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok even uh go follow me you might see something you like definitely definitely uh dave mandalorian uh he's covered movies before i mean the man covers it all and he has a great team too that he does that with his uh the nine nerd do you guys have a name that y'all have come up with uh, uh, I, yeah, I, uh, I, the gang the gang, <laughs> yeah, gang. nine nerd gang <laughs> Well, the nine nerd gang, check them out. Um, like you said, he covers Dave and covers a lot of variety of other shows. So definitely do yourself a favor and check out his channel. So, man, before we get into it, nine, first off, how you doing, man? How was the weekend? You know, it's hot it's out good. here where I'm at. Is, is the weather decent it's for you? Out where you're it at? was actually a nice uh, sunny seventy five, uh, storming a little bit, but gotcha. it was a good, it was a good chill weekend. Um, I had this expectation that it was going to be Mother's Day this Sunday, so yeah. I was a little bit freaking out. But we got some time; it's it's next week, so right. <laughs> get your get tomorrow. your affairs in order. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. Well, hey, movie question, and everyone in the chat too, let us know: Did you get a chance to see uh, the recent release this weekend, Guardians of the Galaxy? I did three. not. I was going to take my ass over to the movie theater, but I may actually because um, I actually have the day off tomorrow, so I may gotcha. actually be. Uh, catching like a, a matinee and walking over to the theater and catching that. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Gotcha, BG. Definitely, definitely, definitely something to check out for any Marvel fans. And, uh, you know, you can check out my thoughts on the movie because I got like 19 videos on it. But definitely, uh, I, I, that me, hit me up tomorrow, man. I, I've been avoiding your channel because yeah, I knew that you were up, on top of it already. Uh, so. let me know what you thought about? Yeah. Are you a Guardians fan? Like Guardians one, two? Fan, oh yeah, so. yeah. Um, I mean, especially with all the mixes that they be dropping too, it just oh, kind of like man. takes you back. I know the music's always going to be fire. Great cast of characters. Um, and uh, uh, uh well. It, it's rounding out. Like I feel like this is like the last little remnants of the old in the MCU. Old, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. The old guard. Definitely. <laughs> Team Kendall. Definitely, Team Kendall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Why definitely uh, excited to hear your thoughts on that, man. But more importantly, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on tonight's episode. So before we get into like the breakdown and, and, and the discussion of everything, listen, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I love these Sundays. I love these discussions. Uh, before we dive deep into it, Hit the like button, please. Uh, share the video if you if you uh, are having a good time. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Like I said, hosting the show, reading comments, pulling up pictures can sometimes a little be a bit, be a bit you know overwhelming or whatnot. But I try my best to get you guys' questions. So definitely on the live chat, drop your your commentary, pros, cons, deeper meanings, scenes that stood out to you as we kind of commentate through the episode. I'm gonna try my best to get to you guys' comments. And yes, no Barry spoilers for those that are. Barry fans, the episode just ended. I uh, do have my review dropping in a little bit here, so you guys can, for the Barry people, can watch that video. But if you are a Barry fan, what an episode. I'll just say that. But uh, nine nah, man, mm -hmm. are you, matter of fact, have you ever watched Barry? Are you ever caught up? I Barry? am so sad to report that I have not watched oh, Barry yet. Um, I've been told it's a really good show, um, but I just haven't had the time to get into it. 
Yeah, so you like yeah, it? I know you. It's- it's the last season, right? It's, uh... it's a, I'm going to say it's the last season. I know you're a busy man. I know a lot of you all are busy out there. But once succession's over, get some time to breathe because we won't be having any big HBO shows for a little bit. Definitely do yourself a favor and watch Barry. It is fantastic. It is fantastic. So I uh, definitely I recommend that. It's good, man. Bill like, Hater. It, 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 let me know, if, like, it, is it a good idea to kind of like binge watch it and then maybe do like my own little retrospective of like my experience watching it? It, it is. It's thing. worth it, man. I definitely think it's going to be one of those shows that people finally will watch. Once it's finally done, people catch up one on what they've been missing for the last uh, six years. I definitely think it's one of those things to kind of catch up on and maybe share your thoughts on it. And it's uh, right, four seasons. Right. It's like Atlanta in a sense of 30-minute episodes, uh, mm-hmm. eight episodes a season. Uh, and you you binge right through them, man, because they're just so captivating. Yeah, yeah. I love it. 30 love minutes it. is quick. That's quick. Yeah, I can it is, but that. they're able, just like Atlanta, they're able to put in so much within those 30 minutes. It's it's mind-boggling, man. So it's definitely something I recommend. But something I do not recommend is going to a party where Shiv and Tom are <laughs> present and Tom is, is, is lack of sleep and Shiv's been called a scorpion. That's a party I do not want to go to. My friend, not, because it's, not. it's not a lit party in that way. It's lit because it's fires needing to be taken out, but not in the sense of having a good time. But we are about to have a good time, ladies and gentlemen, as we are here to break down episode seven of Succession, the fourth and final season tailgate party. As you all can see, I'm not alone. I have a recurring guest that joined me last week and is here to have a good time tonight. We're talking. We tailgating ourselves nine. Uh, so glad to have you back on, man. Again, guys, you can check out his information in the description of this video. A lot of great content you all can consume and watch and not fake the numbers. You know, mm-hmm. hit, watch yeah. his videos 50,000 times, but don't fake the numbers like <laughs> exactly. uh, Lucas did <laughs> in tonight's yeah. episode. Nine before two we Indians. actually. Uh, two Indians. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one. Nine, before we break it all down, initial impressions after we both just got done watching episode 20, 25 minutes ago. How did you feel after watching this episode of tonight's Scorpion versus the Rat? It was brutal, right? Like that Shiv was all up in her bag and she was pulling out all sorts of different weapons, uh, using a shovel to get under people, over people. Um, and she seems to like be under the impression that like, that's just all normal. Like this is just everyday regular shit that, you know, people have to go through, but man, she's snaking the whole team. She can't trust nobody to be honest. Hey, can you blame? I mean, as we'll talk about, can you blame her? Because we find out that Ken wants to do a reverse Viking and leave his sister and his brother in the dirt and go on a on a on a Viking tale of revenge with Frank. So I mean, they're all yeah, and I don't know what what Rome is. <laughs> Roman is just roaming around right now. Can't catch a break with Jerry. He's trying to get his brother Connor to get off of the election. That is not successful. This was not a good night for Roman, ladies and gentlemen. For all my Roman fans, and I'm one of them, he didn't have a good night. But I tell you who did have a good night, and that is Connor Nine. Connor and also his his wife, his supporting wife, may I add, Connor and Willa, ladies and gentlemen. Love Nine, them. never in a million years, Nine, would I have had suspected that in an episode full of couples of, as we'll talk about, Ken and Reva having a moment, you know, Tom and Shiv, Jerry and, and, and Connor, or and Jerry in Rome, uh, Ebba and Lucas, the fact that Connor had his wife backing him up surprised the hell out of me, Nine. Who would have known they would have been the most strongest couple in tonight's episode? I loved it. You know, when Connor said, there's only one person here that doesn't think I'm a joke, mm. I was like, ooh, that is beautiful. And you know what? Ever since Logan passed, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, at Con- Connor's wedding episode. Yeah. Um, I've come to the realization, like, when they are united against that like big threat that Logan was, yeah, I was able to tolerate everybody a lot easier. Mm. But now that Logan's gone and they're all at each other's throats, all of them are despicable. Yeah. Except really for Connor. I kind of like that he's handling like the family business, taking care of the funeral role yeah. arrangements, yeah. um, and just kind of just being himself, take not not stabbing everybody in the back, right? He's the only person that doesn't got the knife ready. Yeah, he's he's focused on him and his wife's future, his potential, uh, you know, Mr. <laughs> Mrs. President, which, listen, we'll talk about the trailer at the end. I, the way the show, and I jokingly said when he was running for president, what if the show secretly makes Connor the president? 
Yeah. That trailer made it seem like there might be some some crazy numbers some, messing yeah. around. Something right, might surprise yeah. everyone. And Connor might end up on top. But we'll talk about him tonight. But uh, shout out to Willa uh, stepping up for her husband and, and all that stuff tonight. But to kick off this episode, my friend, you know, we see Tom and, and Shiv. They got back into cahoots last week. And we're going to, you know, slowly but surely let people know that we took a break for a minute. Now we're back together. Listen, nine, I'm not married, but I've had my fair share of, you know, relationships and, you know, serious relationships. And it's, no one's perfect, nine. No one's perfect. But I think in the handbook of things you don't give your partner, especially when you just got back in a relationship, nine, I don't think you give your partner uh, a, a, a uh, scorpion. A scorpion, a crustacean, like what? Uh, and, and, <laughs> and say it's a joke. Um, nine, I need to know how you felt about this on this opening sequence where we see, again, he's giving her breakfast. And the conversation turns about, you know, for the party tonight. And he gives her a scorpion, my friend. Talk to me, Nine. Was this a good idea by Mr. Tom to set the mood for his So the uh, thing is, is so how it starts <laughs> off. <laughs> it, that was a bold move. But how it starts off, I was like, okay, they seem to actually be on good terms, being able to uh, uh, kind of communicate a little bit better. But then I immediately mm. felt that something was off even before then, just because it felt like, oh, Tom is now just back to his role, like just kissing mm. up to Shiv. Right. 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 And right. I mean, we've seen that with Tom. Like, mm -hmm. if he feels like he, you're good for him or whatever he wants, then right. he's going to kiss, the, he's going to be <laughs> kissing your ass all the way through. <laughs> but then when, uh, <laughs> but when, um, he gives her the scorpion. I was like, huh, that actually does fit for them. Like, he seems to be aware of like all of the crazy sh things that they go through or the things that they do, um, mm -hmm. for their own self preservation. And from that, ep uh, the talk that they had last episode, right? Yeah, when yeah, the truth bombs, ended, yeah, the truth bombs, right? Mm -hmm, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, you guys both agree that you're both terrible people, self preserving right. people, like this gift seems very appropriate kind of yeah it seems like very appropriate like it almost seems like okay we can use this to bond over because we're like both you know we, we're both <laughs> snaky cr crabby people but um uh and I, i'm not really sure why shiv reacted so what was she expecting i i mean we've already seen kendall freak out about getting a watch you yeah. know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. Seen a lot of right like i feel like the watch Logan gets a watch in like episode one. He gives it away to a kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, Kendall freaks out about a watch. Uh, what is a good get, uh, gift for the Roy family? Anything really? I guess a preserved scorpion is the best uh, answer for that, man. Because I'm telling you, so I totally agree with you, Nine, that yeah, this to me and Tom's, if I was in Tom's shoes, that this smile. does seem like an appropriate that smile. is hilarious. And her face is just like, what the, f what is going on? But, uh, it seems like I totally agree. It seems like a, a funny joke, and especially he been he's been going back and forth with her ever since their whole kind of debacle of last season. But I think she just assumed, like you mentioned, back to regularly scheduled program. Tom serving her breakfast, kind of attend, attending to all her needs. But no, Tom still want to take some shots, darling, and he wants to let mm -hmm. you know. You are a scorpion sometimes. You are the scorpion. You bite. Exactly. You You're not someone to be that can be trusted. It's a funny joke. Right. But now, and the thing that I'm still just kind of, I guess, con not confused, but just curious about, and they talk about it a little bit later in the episode about the whole baby of it all and them having babies and she not trusting him to have a baby. She still hasn't told him that she's pregnant. Which is well, at it, this point in the show, so in the season, I'm confused. Is that about even that. a plot anymore? Uh, because right. You know, she we found out in episode three, she's 20 weeks pregnant after the loss of her father. And I'm still just in, you know, the conversation at hand was, is it Tom's? Is it, you know, we'll talk about Nate, uh, the uh, dollar store version of uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. He always reminds me of Jake Gyllenhaal. So <laughs> that's that. actually, yeah, that's He's, actually pretty like spot accurate, on. Yeah. Um, but I'm just so curious, not about this whole baby situation of it all. I'm starting to feel like it is not Tom's baby, because why wouldn't she tell him at this point that she's pregnant? Right. So what is the, um, because remember like last week it was, uh, you and the audience actually pointed out that she was pregnant. I must've mm -hmm. like stepped mm -hmm. out when all of those scenes were happening or something. So I had to like kind of go back and rewatch those scenes. Um, and it seemed like they don't really know what to do with that plot line as of yet. 
yeah. or if it's yeah. something that like maybe you know it's been taken care of on Shiv's part because their conversation at the end kind of made me believe that Tom found out and they just decided not to keep the baby. So that seems like a conversation that needs to be on screen, you know, like, uh, of course, we're in the final season. There's so much to kind of wrap up and who's going to be the one to rule the the Waystar company. But it it does seem like it's a plot line. And and it's in it from all accounts. It seems like the showrunners had a plan. They knew from A to Z how they were going to end the story. But it seems like the baby of it all just kind of came out of left field. Um, and I'm not sure on where, where the wrap up, where the resolution of it all is going to be. I would imagine all the stress that she's dealing with, uh, you know, would maybe cause some complications, but I mean, hell no, nah, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that plot. And I don't know if it's something to keep an eye out for, but speaking of, uh, babies and baby mamas and, and whatnot and complicated relationships, a character we haven't seen and man, nah, I couldn't tell you when, I think it's been back since season two. Maybe let me know in, in 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 the chat, guys. When's the last time we saw this individual? And that is, um, you know, the the ex wife of Ken, uh, Reva. Uh, mm-hmm. She's there to tell Ken that her, the ATN and the the whole election situation going on has kind of caused some scares for her daughter because some people are not the biggest fans of ATN and they clearly, like, yeah, they they p- pushed her, I believe in the street and said some things at her school, which definitely is nothing um, to take lightly. And Ken doesn't take it lightly. He even questions her as a mother. Where were you doing this? What, what happened? Tell me all this stuff. And I don't know, nine, you know how I feel about my man, uh, Ken, but I mean, he's such an absent non-existent father. He's essentially taking everything that he's gotten from his own dad, Logan, and, exactly. and never there. I don't think he's a, a dad. I mean, we haven't gotten a ton seems of scenes. Like less absent than yeah. Logan. Like more absent, I should say than uh, yeah. He Logan doesn't even take the, his, like yeah. He, we've never seen him like truly take them in or teach them mm-hmm. the son his the, you know his son and daughter the ropes of business. Maybe I don't know, man. This whole parenting or I should say fake parenting to me was just something that I I, I again I'm a Ken fan, but I'm gonna throw him under the bus on this. It's like, bro, you don't care. You don't really care. You, you really just pretending to be care. I'm doing this for them. It's like, shut the fuck yeah. up, bro. You cool. have not yeah. even said one of them. their names. What are their names, Kendall? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually kind of confused because I thought they were like young. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it seems like he has a daughter that is I think old time enough is to t- kind yeah. of be in like the political spectrum where she can yeah. kind of decide that like she doesn't really fuck with ATN. And yeah. I mean, how crazy would that be? That would be like, you know, being uh, the... Like, like, imagine if we, for a second, movie, movie files, Elliot, <laughs> imagine if we were, like, somehow the sons of someone that worked for Fox News. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> you know, we would have something to say about that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, we would yeah. be kind of um, uh, uh, a little bit compromised with our um, own feelings politically and then um, uh, uh, with our parents, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... I really didn't think that they were actually that old enough to be at that state, but it seems like she's even catching a lot of slack from her peers, um, mm. people at school that um, don't agree with ATN either. Right. So, right. Damn. I don't know. And I mean, and, and in all honesty, I, I I couldn't even tell you the age of his kids. It's been that long since we've seen them. Now, I don't think we've, from the last time we saw them, it hasn't been, you know, seven or eight years. It's probably been like at least a couple of years. And I think the last time we saw her, she was maybe 10 or 12. So in today's landscape, not as you know, these telephones that we have here, kids are, uh, I don't want to say informed, but they stay in the loop more so than when we were in kids. Like when I was in uh, middle school, I didn't know, you know, I wasn't following who's running for president or whatnot. Exactly. But in today's, you know, TikTok society and people making videos and even, you know, I can't think of the young lady's name with the climate change, how she's like, what, 14, oh, 15? Greta, yeah. Greta, yeah. It's like, you know, I, when we were growing up, I, I couldn't think of any kids at that age having all these type of uh, insightful commentary on the world and, and, and climate change. So right. it could be a matter of she is still young but in our society these kids are just so privy to technology information just at the palm of their hands and they don't might know the whole political landscape of everything they just know that her dad works for atn their parents are probably talking stuff about him at night and they're probably reflecting with their parents here and just throwing it out on her uh exactly. she has nothing to do with it so it is unfortunate but at the same time it's like ken you're fake pumping your chest up right now man what are you really going to do 
Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and and the way he was just coming at her, right? Yeah, calling her he's bad. Mom, at, or, like, not bad, mom, but like a scene waiting. That she some ins- implications, like, yeah. oh, where were you? It's exactly. Like, I where were you? Raising our kids. Like, where were you? How come you? Like, come on, man. Yeah, it's, that, it's that a mess, a, man. That was a bit out of pocket. And um, I would like to see more of that plot line um, followed up with. Uh, true, true. It almost kind of feels like, because what, we have three episodes left? Yeah. It almost yeah. feels like, yeah, we could have gotten another season, right? It started. Um, we talked about the baby, even you know the relationship with his wife. There seems to be some threads or plot lines that are might be left to be unanswered potentially. Um, mm-hmm. But I definitely agree with you. There's still some meat on the bone. But I, to your point, now I don't know if we'll ever follow up with this Reva daughter being right. in the middle of this yeah. political situation. So, and I, I guess the question I have for you and everyone in the comments, I guess what what did you take away? Obviously, besides Kim being kind of a you know want to be dad, but. Besides that, was there anything else that you took away from this scene besides him saying, I'm doing this all for the kids and, you know, I'm making the world safe? Is that a, a, a Logan um, kind of antidote to type of set? That, what, that what just did you seemed think? like straight up bullshit, though. Yeah. You know, making that just did not safe. even seem like it made any sense. Like, yeah. really, are you? You're doing this for your kids. Like, you're a billionaire many times over. Yeah. Like, you really don't need to be doing nothing for your kids, right? They can, you could be handing them the reins to whatever business that you want them to uh Mm -hmm. and what we're going to get like a succession with all of uh uh uh, kendall's kids nah that (laughs) that ain't even gonna happen i wouldn't be yeah i I wouldn't be down for that but yeah let us know in the comments guys what you think about that you know kids my boy but he's he's definitely not the best dad just like his dad was but speaking of the dad of it all roman shiv ken and connor have their first meetup i think this is the first time we've seen all of them together on one screen since uh the, running, yeah. since finding out yeah since finding out that their dad died uh so what is that four episodes now but or, connor's or keeping he connor's is such a weird guy dude he's what does he say he's like i, I saw dad today like and, and you know connor's kind of off you know <laughs> filtered uh you know his childhood he's like yeah, yeah i visited dad again and he makes a comment like it, it feels like it's therapeutic for him to see dad who's there but not really there it's like mm-hmm. okay sure I, woke I, up on I, the right yeah. side of the casket today yeah yes like yeah. Not, not the right thing to say Connor, but yeah. the question at or the the topic at hand is he's you know polling pretty well again. I don't know if the show's gonna give us Connor, Mr. President. Well, Connor yeah. He's polling uh, pretty well in Alaska and a couple of the um you know states there, but more importantly, he brings the question to the table nine, which I'm assuming the way this show is shaping up and based on the trailer from for next week, the Logan funeral might be the finale. Uh, they might end this show with all the kids saying their final goodbyes. Mm-hmm. to their dad i think that's or maybe episode nine but i'm feeling like it's going to be a finale that they we're going to actually get the funeral of logan but the question is nine is who's going to speak at the funeral which we'll talk about a little bit later but they have the conversation after you know connor goes away with ken and rome and shiv that they want to invite the fake jake jimmy hall aka nate to this party because they want to continue to spook Manson off of the deal. And we can see Nine the Shiv's clearly uncomfortable with this, not only because of the what they're still trying to do with uh with Lucas, but more importantly, invite Nate to the party after her and her husband are getting back on the same page. Which yeah. speaking of, she's texting Tom some, you know, some they're they're acting very like they're acting like they're like this is 2.0 like, honeymoon stages. Texting each other some very interesting stuff there. What would you think about all that, man? And and Shiv and her position of power of she got Manson on one line. She's going to be getting her ex to the party. She's talking, you know, sexy with her husband. Shiv's on a high right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> she seems to be um, thinking that she's like the puppeteer or whatever. She seems to be, um, uh, 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 yeah, like like as you said, kind of like on a high or in control. Good, good suit, by the way. Um, now, uh, what was I going to say? Um, you know, I, I I don't really think that she has a heart, but you did see something on her face when she had that, like, uh, 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 when she fin- find out that they want to have Nate back. Um, yeah. But it almost seemed like, it was more so uh, just for the calculation of the deal, 
right? Right. Not really right. of something like of like, oh, I'm worried about Tom or you know having all of this stuff be brought up at the party, but more mm. so um, that it's just going to be complicate make things more complicated for for her to pull her strings, right? Right. Right. And I think that's like an important distinction to make. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you, man. I think, uh, and, and I totally agree with you too. And we'll get to the scene where she does seem to have been uncomfortable with the idea of Nate being there. Like she actually might've cared about Tom's feelings for 0.2 seconds. But mm -hmm. again, I think like you said, and this, that, that smile on her face right now says it all where she's just like, I'm doing this deal with my brothers. Meanwhile, I'm, you know, in the bed with the devil with uh, Lucas and keeping him in form and stuff. I'm going to be, again, having my ex-boyfriend involved in this, you know, tailgating party. So right now she's, she's smelling the roses. She's in kind of full control, but slowly, surely, but surely later in this episode now, as we'll talk about things just kind of crumble uh, all in front of her. Her relationship is now back to ground zero. Um, you know, the whole Lucas of it all is kind of blown up in her face. So, Again, these characters, I can't keep leaving out the fact that early in the season, Ken, Roman, and Shiv, when they were all working together, Nine, things were actually going good. But as mm -hmm. soon as they start backstabbing and doing all that stuff, it just destroyed everything. They can't help it. They can't, man. They can't help it. And they, they really can't even help it to the point of like seeing a common goal all the way through. Right. Exactly. And that's exactly, when man. Uh, Logan was like that, you know, was the linchpin for them to even be able to work together. Um, I agree. And <laughs> that, that, that's tough. But uh, yeah, at the same time, like, you know, that's the best part of the show. <laughs> yeah. It really is, man. It really is. And as we'll talk about here, as you have pulled up as far as the, the nate of it all, it's 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 going to get juicy, man. It's going to get juicy. But before we get into my boy Greg, who has become the firing machine, like, uh, you know, Roman here, uh, he went from being afraid to fire people to now he wants to do it every day of the week if he can. Let everyone in the chat, uh, let us know what you guys think about the first, was the first 10 to 15 minutes of the episodes thus far and everything we've talked about. Um, again, the, the, the kin of it all, him and his relationship with his kids, you guys think that will be brought up again in the rest of this three episodes that we have left. The pregnancy side of it all, what is going on with Siobhan? What is going on with Tom? Is it his baby? Is it Nate's baby? Is it someone else entirely? Let us know how you guys are feeling about that. But now, before we get into it, man, let me, let me check in with the fine folks. We got over... Um, 126 people watching us live again. It's a uh, 10 11 where I'm at, and the fact that you guys are joining me and my man Nine uh, means a lot to me. I know Nine loves interacting with everyone on shows that we love talking about, so we we're both very appreciative of you guys joining us tonight. So again, thank you a, a million. Hit the like button, share all that good stuff. It goes a long way. Uh, but let me see if anyone has any any questions or any commentary uh, on stuff that we talked about. Ken is an absent father, but not a deadbeat. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a difference between being absent while in his mind thinking he's building a legacy for his kids, even though he barely talks about them. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's a deadbeat dad per se, nine, but it definitely feels like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely a difference between the two, but it's not too far off from each other. It's like you can being absent from your kids can be just as detrimental to someone, you know, maybe being, you know, verbally abusive or uh, whatever the case may be. But would you say he's more of a absent father or a deadbeat father? Uh, I guess like an absent father, um, you know, like we got to define terms here because right. like what would be the deadbeat? Can you be a deadbeat father if you're, a uh, billionaire with a bunch of uh, uh, <laughs> different workflows that you got. Like, you know, he is like working, right? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of what he does is just like bullshit. Um, or like what Shiv said at the party to Madison, it's just money and gossip, right? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say just more of an absentee father. Uh, definitely not going to have a good relationship with his kids when they grow up. So like the cycle's going to yep. continue. Um mm -hmm. Ooh, I like what they said. I don't think uh, Shiv will ever tell Tom she's pregnant. Um, probably not. But yeah, yeah I, I, I don't scary. know. You, you're. What would you align Kendall with the? Uh, I think it's more the absence of being a, a father because I think um, you know I go back to and I think it was season two when Logan was going through his. Uh, no, it was maybe season one or two, but there was a point where uh, Logan yelled at his son. I think. 
Or no, it was the Thanksgiving episode when he like hit his son. Uh, he was kind of oh, going through right. his little mental state and he hit his son. And then we saw Ken like actually like step up to his dad, like, don't touch him and kind of come at mm -hmm. him. So I think there is uh, a, a care, love for the kids. But I don't think, uh, again, I think it's more or less a, a, a I mean, product of his it. environment. He, his dad was absent. His dad was kind of mm -hmm. non existent in his life to a certain degree, but he was always there. And I think Ken in his mind made it seem as though while dad was never absolutely present every single day of our life he was always working to make sure that we had food on the table you know tennis lessons piano lessons and that was his way of showing love to the kids which was constantly working and building this legacy to so eventually mm -hmm. pass on to his kids so i think ken in his kind of weird not weird but in his mind that's the best way of showing love to your kids is constantly working to build that legacy to pass mm -hmm. on to them but I will say if there's a, a, a negative spin on the show, that is a plot in a, in a story beat that hasn't really been that fleshed out is the fact that there is a character that has kids, which in this case is Ken. And we really haven't seen that much of him being a father as we right. have with him and his that relationship. It would be like a very children. interesting dynamic to see how like that kind of like trans uh, transfers over to how he treats yeah. his kids. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just like, uh, like, oh yeah, Reva. It, it just seemed like they just caught each other on accident on the street yeah. or whatever. Like, oh, hey, <laughs> I, your kids are kind of, you know, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely kind of like, a, a, an afterthought. It was, it was don't the feeling like, of it all. Right. Y'all don't text or call. Like, can't you just talk to your kid? Why don't you just call your kids, Kendall? Exactly. <laughs> just call your kids and get yeah. the scoop from them. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. I hear you. I hear you. But yeah, guys, let us know again in the chat. Well, again, I'll try to get you guys leaving so many great comments and I'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, but definitely what I love about this community nine is uh, even if I don't have the time to read all the comments. I love that they interact with each other. And as you know, with your community as well, it's always great to see the community, you know, having a, a conversation amongst each other, whether they- Oh yeah, I'm going through these people. comments right now. They're- Yeah, they're, man, it's- They're chopping it up, I like stuff, it. Uh, and I appreciate that, guys. Uh, and I hope you guys are having a good time tonight. Uh, and again, if you are, definitely do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. But getting back into it all, uh, Nine, as we navigate through this episode, I don't want to neglect my man, Greg the Egg, uh, who, as we remember, nine just a couple weeks ago, um, he was given the task with firing his, um, you know, different people. Uh, you know, he was very nervous to put or not fire the uh, the Carrie situation when she wanted to be a news report or a news mm. anchor. He had to give her the bad news. He was very, very nervous about doing so. Yeah. Uh, but fast Such forward to now, the he's just Greg. Like, yeah. I need to fire them? Bet. I'm right. there for it. I mean, we get this scene here in nine that first off, uh, you talk about people and their fakeness. You know, we have um uh, uh Greg pretending like he's you know upset that people are about to lose their job and they're about to make these cuts uh with the people he's doing these fake tears, but he ultimately hands the bill off to Greg. And Greg, man, I want to get your thoughts, nine. He has become, again, you mentioned last week, he was always kind of our entry point to the show. He's kind of us and viewing these rich, you know, mm -hmm. conniving, conniving people. But now he's become one of those people. So he's almost like, I don't know who our point of view is now. We're just there on the journey and just watching all the madness. But he is getting uh, a kick out of firing all these people. And there's a couple other scenes that we'll talk about with Greg in this episode. But generally speaking, now, what do you think about Greg doing all the firing and then later on, uh, you know, making jokes about it with uh, with Lucas and that he was willing to fire uh, Ebba a little bit later? Is he is his head getting too big? Is this going to blow up? And my man's Greg, is, is that egg going to crack is my question for you now. See, <laughs> uh, is the Greglet going to make an omelet? Um, now, I think that like, well, well, first of all, that scene with uh, Greg Farner and people, it felt a lot like um, there's that movie with like George Clooney, I think. And it's his job uh, just to go around firing people from different like organizations or whatever. Right. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah. And that, yeah. like, he takes on the wing of, uh, it's like, I don't know, like, some, it's, it's like this white chick or whatever. Um, is it up and there? She's, is, that, is it up in there in the name of it? That that sounds maybe Vera, correct. Vera Farmiga, if I'm not mistaken. There's, I'm going to make uh, it that, that sounds kind of correct, but yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I know George Clooney. It's been a while since I've seen it. But yeah. it did feel like that kind of, like, dynamic, right? Where mm. um, he's, like, the apprentice of 
uh, uh, wanting to be a cutthroat but doesn't really know how to do it. And that actually kind of maybe comes off better for someone in that position, like that kind of seems a bit more timid and unwilling to do it but has to do it, yeah. right? Um, but we do know that last season, uh, that conversation he had with Tom, he's like, well, who needs a soul? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't, I, you know, so Greg seems pretty committed to um, not just like uh, doing whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying like he feels like he's a top contender for whatever position. Like he could be trying to snake Tom, right? At this very moment in <laughs> some type of capacity. He has played the game, and I know, uh, listen, Greg for a while was a character that I just always got, I still do get a kick out of. I think the way Nicholas plays the character is so great. But, I mean, he's come from being the clown and a joke and, the, you know, the character that we always just kind of ignore, kind of like a Connor, but he has played the game. Like still you said, is right? a little bit, but like, yeah, he's playing yeah, no. the game, right, he is. As, as opposed to Connor. Later in this episode, he says a comment where he's like, uh, where Tom tells him to kind of, you know, uh, kiss up to, to Lucas. He's like, I don't know, Tom. I'm going to might just stick on the Rome and, and Ken train and just kind of, again, just la latching well, on to Lucas whoever's winning. hates me, so why would I, you know, back him? Right. He's he's smart, man. He's a smart idiot, as I've always said. He's in the he's at the right place at the just the right time. And I'm very intrigued to see what the show where Greg lands. Like, is he gonna be the head of ATN by the all of this? Like what you just mentioned. Will he <laughs> snake out Tom? He's one oh my goodness. Snaking out Tom. Nine. Can you imagine a news network, a conglomerate like ATN, which is like Fox News or whatnot in our landscape or uh in uh, NBC or something like that? Could you imagine someone like Greg running the news? I could oh not. My oh my I think God. it's funny because we don't even really know what Greg believes in, right? Exactly. Like, exactly. I don't think he believes in anything. We just know that he's up to the task and willing to do the job. But yeah, it, it would be a complete uh, crazy, uh, crazy place if he ran It'd the news. Um, I do like how the comments are pointing out uh, Greg's grandfather. Logan's brother. I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, his grandfather was, he was, you know, there was a plot line where the, he told his grandfather he was going to continue to work with the Logans and, and all that stuff and stay with the Roy family. He said, I'm going to cut you off. The the inheritance you were set up for, I'm not going to give to you. Instead, I'm going to give mm -hmm. to charity. And then Greg made a joke that he was going to sue a charity or whatnot. So yeah, I, that is a very good point that the people are mentioning in the comments and that you mentioned here mm -hmm. that his grandfather was going to cut him off. But where's his grandfather been? Again, if we are to get this episode nine or finale with with uh the logan funeral i would imagine that i believe his name was edwin uh that mm -hmm. his brother would attend his brother's funeral even though i know they weren't on the best of terms but right as you mentioned earlier that is yet another plot that kind of seemed to get lost in the sauce uh per se so i'm very curious to know it, if that is it, something it does make sense on a certain level um yeah. especially when we were considering greg's uh progression into like the cutthroat business guy or whatever um that since he's now cut off, now he actually has to work and yeah. try to get those millions because what he gave up what? Uh he gave up like a hundred million. I don't remember what that hair. It was a pretty good amount. I think I, it, if I'm not mistaken, was it five million? I think it was it was like five million. Five million, because I think um Connor and Tom were making fun of him like you're not rich with five million. That's like chump. I, I might be wrong mm -hmm. on the number, but it was right. it was enough to live off of where he came from. So uh, some people are saying two hundred fifty million. So I might be way off. I, but I, th I thought it was something around like it, it was pretty obscene, but still, okay. uh, but still, like Tom and Kendall were like, what? Like Just you know, I'll, yeah. I'll coin flip for that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, again, I'm very curious on uh, these little. And again, this isn't like they don't address him and his grandfather again. That is not. A, I'm not going to cry over that. But I am very intrigued to see what the show does with Greg moving forward. If he is going to end up running ATN or wait, running whatever news uh, company they want to run. If he sticks with Ken, maybe he'll be running Pierce uh, news station or something. I, I definitely think they have something planned for Greg moving forward before we wrap up the show. But going back into the fun of the tonight's festivities nine. We got a party to attend, and uh, it's time to tailgate, my friend. We head to the party, and, you know, right off the bat, Tom lets his wife know he's pretty tired. But uh, he's going to have to step up tonight because uh, an ex is coming to the party, and Tom plays it cool. I think this was, you know, the the Scorpion at the beginning of the episode. 
Now Tom's finding out that Nate's going to be attending the party. He, he's playing it cool at first, Nine, but one of the funniest, it was a quick no, scene, that but it was a funny-ass like scene. dying. When inside. Nate comes to the party, and if you guys remember the season one, when Tom finally kind of stepped up and, and kind of told Nate, how he felt about him, and the whole joke about the wine, and take that's my wine. You can't drink any more wine, and he had never be kicked him out of the way. <laughs> yeah, nine that call back to when Nate and Tom have a bit of a, a of a talking. It was one of the funny again, quick scene, but the way Tom was, plays comedy, hilarious. whenever you see Tom kick back, which is so funny, man. What did you think about Tom telling Mr. Nate that uh, oh, I, you can go ahead and have my wine? It's it's a difference between you know being a wine con you know connoisseur and mm -hmm. you know whatever he said. So, I don't know. I just thought that scene was so Can I play you, like a little uh, six seconds or whatever that I got queued up here? I would love for you to, but now YouTube has been on one with it's pulling on one. you um, strikes and all this stuff. But yeah. Oh, I know. I, oh, I know. I know. Um, yeah. Uh, when he says, well, I've missed you. <laughs> I thought that was the whole, most hilarious thing because that's like literally the last thing that you would want to hear from this man that I yeah. missed you. You can have all the wine that you want. Like, okay, I'm not even going to be drinking no wine. I'm not drinking nothing that this guy's near. Um, because yeah, he, he, it looks like he's going from my head here. Um, but it, it's a complicated spot because it almost seems that um, Nate would have found out or realized that people are trying to get Tom fired, right? Mm -hmm. That Tom is not actually at that, you know, legit uh, spot on position to make all of those big moves, right. um, which right. I thought was pretty dirty because, you know, like Shiv is also not going to be backing him up at all. Uh, he invited their ex fling to the whole shindig. And is just playing all different sides. So, yeah. And, and at the end of the day, he's tired too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, and, <laughs> now, I don't know if you've ever, and for everyone watching us, um, I don't know, and, and whether it's in a relationship or not, but have you ever been to a party or a party you didn't really want to go to, but you went because either your friends talked you into it or, again, your partner might have talked you into it? And you just got you you on one right you if anyone says something look at you wrong and they might just said something that's just like you know something you should brush off normally but you just find it and you grow it into something else nine he I, was tired and he let everyone know about it i've been in this exact almost exact situation here with an ex yeah oh, in a pretty toxic situation here oh, where oh, i man. showed up to the party mm -hmm. um didn't really know who was all going to be there who's going to show up yeah. to her credit she didn't think that he was going to show up she didn't invite him but like you know he's part mm -hmm. of the friend group or whatever so gotcha. he has that opportunity to slip, slide by and i gotta say i feel like bigger men prevail a bit you know what i'm saying with, like you, with, hey, Nate you just was the bigger smooth. man in this situation uh i would say that uh <laughs> I mean, yeah, because Nate doesn't seem to be interested in Shiv at all, right? Yeah, I think that's Shiv. So, Shiv like, said, Tom yeah. is super territorial or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like, if Tom played it like Nate, right? But mm -hmm. I think you gotta, like, he had to just drop a few jabs there. He had to. And, and listen, to man, it, it's petty. You know, it's Tom petty, some would say. Uh, but I'm here for it, man. I always like when Tom takes his digs back at people, especially someone like Nate, who we all know did mess around with Shiv when they were engaged. So it, it mm -hmm. was uh, something I think was well-deserved. And I, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, – I was surprised that he didn't take a, you know more more shots at him. But, again, he was hosting a party. But speaking mm -hmm. of hosting parties, uh, we find out that this whole Macon and, and the other candidate is, is not looking good for Rome and his team because it seems like Macon is, is kind of not um, highly regarded as a lot of people were thinking. So the whole camp for Macon is telling Rome that, hey, we need you to convince your brother Connor to drop out. And nine again, I think Connor might be my, and we'll get to MVPs a little bit later, but just a little insight of where my mind's at so far. Connor like really did He's a good job. And I've and I've been talking about it for a while. I feel like the show really doesn't, I mean, I know they use Connor for sometimes levity and just to kind of sometimes break the tension, but I, I don't feel like he's never had truly a, a story or a plot to be 
attached to like anyone else. Mm -hmm. But tonight he impressed me, uh, Nine, as we see that Rome approaches him and, and he offers Somalia and offers him, you know, he comes back and says, you know, give me the UN. And then he yeah. talks to his consultant, which I think was, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> was the uh, the Pierce. I think that was like one of the Pierce members, if I'm not mistaken. And him uh -huh. and, uh, him and uh, um, Connor hit it off when they first met each other in season two. But, you know, he doesn't want the UN or he does. He offers the UN and, you know, ultimately <laughs> they tell him, Connor, we don't want to put you. He says, you know, self um, anywhere with nukes, anywhere with nukes. We can't. Well, like, I don't want to go nukes. anywhere that doesn't have nukes, actually. was <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite lines one of my favorite lines wow. of the episode. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel bad for Connor because like, even when um, they met up at that, uh, at that restaurant, mm -hmm. he, when he was talking about like, oh yeah, I'm clinching onto some percentiles or whatever. She looked at him like, oh yeah, you are running yeah. for president. <laughs> like, that's right. How is that going? Like, I was like, damn, yeah, they don't give no love to Connor. No love to Connor. Um, but I kind of um, appreciate how he's sticking to his guns. Yeah, you got to respect him. He's not afraid to, you know, he, what What did he say? He said that I've, you know, put in too much money and blood much, into yeah. this thing to just drop out like 10 hours before the polls open. Yeah, man, I, I think like, out of all the kids, uh, not, I think you might have mentioned earlier, um, he seems to be the only one right now that seems to be he's yes, he's kind of living in Connor land and Connor world with running for president and all this stuff. But in reality, he's the only one and in this weird, crazy, chaotic world that he has his stuff together right now. He has a wife, a newly wife that seems to support him, which none of these characters can say that other than him. Mm -hmm. He's doing something uh, for himself, which is running for the president of the United States of America. <laughs> none of these kids are doing that. Hey, man. Can you imagine? I would not be able to, you know, whatever. I'm single right now, but yeah. I could not imagine like how it would play over with any person I was dating. I was just like, you know, I think I, I'm going to run for president, you know? Hey, man, <laughs> uh, Kanye said it a couple of times. He wants to run for president. So I would, I would love that. That tell all book yeah, of some I of his ex. I, uh, I don't have Kanye passion. So. Uh. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, again, I, we'll get to it later, but uh, Connor is definitely on my front runner uh, for uh, MVP of tonight's episode. But before we get into more conversations, you know, Frank and Jerry arrive at the party to Rome's surprise. Um, we'll talk about the Ken speech here in a second. But just to check in with everyone, we got over 160, oh, 154. Uh, we, we lost six people on the way here. But uh, we got 154 people watching live now. And again, man, I appreciate you being here. Uh, and I appreciate everyone watching us live. So, guys, do me a favor. Hit the like, share, leave your thoughts and comments. I'm going to try to get to them right now. Uh, but more importantly, you see this guy on the um, – on the what is this the left of me the right of me nine he's uh he's not only uh you know a, a great content creator but he has a lot of great insights on not only this show atlanta dave you name it uh he has a great youtube channel that you guys to check out his link and his information can be found in the description of this video just uh reach 16k uh so thank you all for the sweet 16 um salute <laughs> yeah. Congrats, man. Congrats. well deserved man I, i'm um I'm so glad Atlanta put us in, uh, in in connection, man. I've been loving seeing the growth of your channel. And again, the the not someone mentioned earlier, the Nine Nerd Yardies, I think was the name that they the had mentioned yardies. earlier. Uh, <laughs> gang, gang, I, I love what you guys are doing, man. So congrats to you and, and, and many more uh, milestones to come, my friend. Uh, but let let's see what people are saying about our boy Connor Nine. Uh, Larry saying Connor has a different mother than them. He does. Uh, mm -hmm. His mother, as they mentioned, was in a loony bin a couple times. No thanks Su to Logan. Super sad. Yeah, I feel man. Like, yeah. Um, Larry thinks he's going to win. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Connor might go to oh my, yeah, the, I gotta talk oh to my, my woman. Oh my, I talk about oh oh my. My. <laughs> <laughs> bars, man. He was dropping bars tonight. I, I really do uh, think that Tom or Connor was uh, I, the scene still. I really like Willa too. Like it, yeah, I like how cool. Willa has turned into like at first I was like oh yeah she in it for the money or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now she seems she to actually was, be, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But there also seems to be real love in that now, and uh, I really kind of appreciate that dynamic. Yeah, I right? mean, some say it's Stockholm syndrome. She's she's fell in love with her. <laughs> yeah. uh, no one's forcing her to be with him. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, as you just mentioned, that, and she even said so. 
mm-hmm. back in episode two when Connor was trying to have the engagement party. She ran off. She was nervous to marry him. But then she came back to him that night and said, yeah, I was in it for the money. I have to look out for myself. There is some of that that's involved. But like you just said, now, I think over time, she's kind of fallen in love with the Connor charisma. We think he has swag, a charisma. I don't know what you call it. You, you, you fall in love I with I think him. it's just like there's something maybe endearing about his delusions, right? <laughs> like if you have just like whatever infinite money to throw at something, it's just like yeah. kind of like why not, you know? And then just right. appreciate that person for who they are. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, you, I guess you can grow to uh, just actually like them. Um, yeah. But someone said I wouldn't say she is in love with them. I think she has adjusted, and right. maybe it is more of a, a adjustment. But mm-hmm. but at the same time what i feel like he actually does love her i should say yeah no for sure i think at first it was kind of one of those uh wait someone's paying attention to me i'm gonna give them all the attention because this is the thing about connor um he's always been seeking attention since he was the one kind of the kid that was left out he's the oldest of the kids and he's always been kind of forgotten about so he's always i think he gravitates when everyone when anyone shows him any slight ounce of attention he's going to give them all his attention and i think over time he was probably shell-shocked that willa has stayed around for so long at this point Mm -hmm. in time i think in his mind he thought that it was going to probably be like a little fling you know get what he wanted out of the relationship maybe help her out he's probably done this before right you would mm-hmm. imagine that he's probably had 19 different willas throughout right. there you know throughout what this about the, uh, one chick that like roman was uh i feel like they were almost like booed up or wiped up um yep. uh, different roman like, relationships very early Tabitha on or something yep. like that I think right? he broke, yeah he was because he was having like some issues some you know, weird like, things yeah, yeah. You know, he, yeah. he was, <laughs> Roman crazy, you know, yeah. Roman crazy. He turned on by, but, uh, uh, yeah, women. like it, it could have easily yeah. turned into that situation where we just never even hear about this mm-hmm. uh, woman again, or like Naomi Pierce, where it's just like only feeding into the worst aspects of Kendall, right? And like promoting yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but with Willa, it seemed like such a consistent. I, again, not love uh, uh, completely on Willa's side, but it seems like a yeah. very complete love from Connor. Hundred percent, and 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 to your point too, out of, out of all the different various kind of small random relationships we've seen we see ken dated the pierce daughter as you mentioned we've seen rome with his kind of side piece and and various other side pieces but no one has stuck around this long besides willa so mm-hmm. shout out to willa man <laughs> she's <survived laughs> uh, boy family she uh did. but again thank you all for the great commentary keep dropping your comments and i'll try my best to get to them but getting back into it nine Again, I mentioned Frank and, and Jerry arrived. Roman surprised by this. But then my boy, Kenny Ken, Ken who took a little bit of a backseat this episode compared to last week when he had his moment to shine. And, and, and by the way, we do get a moment in this episode where Roman does kind of tell his brother that he's sorry, that he kind of bailed on him on stage. Uh, and he's like, that's all right, little bro. You know, I'm still on that high. He is the way says in this episode but we have this moment here where he's just you know back to back weeks he's 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 controlling the room he's controlling the narrative he has people's mm-hmm. attention he has this little speech here a moment of silence for their father and you know they normally this is a big deal for them and it's, it's a great line that he says in this moment uh nine that i wrote down here we uh we watch history we make history and one day we become it uh, I, I don't know i thought that was like put that, that was on a, on a really good like, send off for uh for you know, you know, to yeah. address the situation on mm-hmm. um, the elephant in the room, right? Um, and I gotta say, uh, I love that look that Shiv gave to Roman for that moment of silence. Like, mm-hmm. they really cannot like feel anything, bro. Yeah. Like, or a- any type of like public display. Um, but it also, I think, stems from the fact that like. Logan would have like rolled his eyes at that whole thing. Mm-hmm. He would probably just be like, "Oh, fuck off," or some shit like that, yeah. right? Um, and they may be able to see through the bullshit, but you can't doubt the fact that Kendall was like really chewing up some scenery right there, I making understand. the vibe exactly respectful. Until it is, um, uh, until Vanilla Ice <laughs> shows up with his golden, <laughs> golden tracksuit. 
I was like, bro. Man, Matson's uh Matson's fashion is uh definitely something. I guess it's European. Um, yeah, man, talk to me nine. He comes in perfect, <laughs> perfect timing, I guess you could say, why everyone's having this moment of silence. He comes in with his uh, you know, um Tiger King look and he disrupts the the good juju in the room. And, you know, he, he breaks the moment of silence and we see, you know, they're clearly clueless about this. Uh, referring to Ken in Rome, they didn't think he was going to be there. But of course, Shiv's playing stupid. Oh, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't know. Like, come on, Shiv, you're, you're, you're playing good. You know, your, your brothers are believing, but we all knew she knew this was going down. But as they say, Operation Nuke the Luke is underway nine yeah. as Shiv is now talking to Lucas uh, and, 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 the dynamic is just so electric to me. As you, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I'm a big fan of Alexander Skarsgård, and he is kind of the the Logan 2.0 of a sorts in the second half of the season. She's giving him the advice of who to talk to, who to bump elbows with, and she says, you know, just kind of stay out of your way. Don't be the the, the Lucas that we know saying inappropriate tweets. Don't um, make enemies tonight because you know he's purchasing the biggest cultural asset out there on the market. But mm -hmm. Let me know how did you feel about Lucas in tonight's episode nine, how he navigated, how he seems he was very every episode in this show with him in it, especially a couple of weeks ago. He seems to always control his own narrative. He seems to have a good temperament. He knows how to control the room. He was thrown off in tonight's episode. And I don't know he if was it was because of the big wigs or the numbers coming out. He was kind of, he was a little weak in tonight's yeah, episode. I, I think the, that's kind of like the testament to um, Skarsgård's acting or his character. Uh, right, for right. this one, because I remember uh, last week when he sent that text out and then or uh, the tweet out and then deleted it. Right. I was like, right. OK, it does seem like the chip in his armor is starting to show a bit more. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, this episode is just kind of like, oh, they chipped away at it just a little bit. Right. Right. Um, he's trying to be the golden boy, <laughs> as we can see. Um, and uh, really, uh, as you said, like this would have been, I feel like Logan really would have gotten along with uh, Madison, right? Like, uh, yeah, really did He's... um, kind of admire him and wanted him to take him on as his own son or some shit like that. I was gonna say, nine, some might say he's the son that Logan always wanted, right? Because mm -hmm. he does kind of have that persona and that kind of bravado where he can disrupt things and make people uncomfortable as we know that was like the logan treatment to everyone he, he's he's a master at making you feel uncomfortable and i think uh manson is definitely that type of character but like i said in tonight's episode he seemed to be a little bit thrown off uh especially when we get to the scene about his numbers being fake but his uh his his crew you know, I can't think of his his, his second hand man who's high on edibles in this episode, and then his PR. I don't know. I just thought that was funny when he said his ex girlfriend, uh, 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 Emma, communications manager. I, believe, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just yeah. like that dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> because she is uh, like very like you know just kind of centered, very yeah. like kind of shy, doesn't speak much, doesn't have to say more than um what she needs to say right exactly. and uh yeah their their whole crew just seems to be pretty bad and i almost felt at when we first met them i was like okay they're going to be like this more like elite squad uh more on on top of their gang their game than uh are the kids right the Roy family is but they all seem like oh yeah just a bunch of degenerates too right exactly Exactly. Like she, she has this whole, and we still, I guess we're going to find out more about, I guess their relationship between the blood and all the stuff he gives her and then him just being high at this party. So yeah, they, as you mentioned, yeah, when we met them in the episode a couple weeks ago, I assumed that they were going to be the more refined version, the more cleaned up version of our yeah. characters, but they're just as messed up and have, they don't know up from down, left to right. Uh, but very, very intrigued to talk about her a little bit later. Right. So she dropped some, some mics, she dropped some bombs in this episode that I'm Mm -hmm. Not cur I'm very curious on what her angle of it all is, like where she sees herself uh, at the end. Because of this. like, it seems like she's putting up with like abuse. Yeah, uh, pretty Madison. much. Was, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like surprised that you would even at like why why is she there? Why even be so close to them? You know, you could have just uh, received all of this information in an email, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she's. I, the way I almost look at her, and, and, and like you just mentioned, the kind of the abuse of it, it's almost like kind of the uh, a, a pseudo version of Tom and, and Shiv. Like it seems like mm -hmm. 
uh, Lucas is the, the the shiv of their relationship, and she just kind of takes whatever he gives her. Uh, so it is mm -hmm. a very interesting angle that they're doing with her, and I and I don't know exactly where it goes, but not knowing where things go, and that's Ken and trying to set up this whole uh, operation, nuke the Luke. He's having a conversation with Nate. He's going buddy buddy with him, and then he puts the man. Ken is just running his mouth and telling everyone his little plans. But we have the scene I first off. Brave, yeah. like, like not even brave, just like bold. Actually, I was like, "Man, you're really everyone's gossiping here." You, yeah, just once you tell one person, that. you know that everyone is going to know about it. Exactly, which I guess yeah. to to that point too. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I don't want to skip it over. But the scene prior to that was a very, uh, you know, the seed was planted with the time of it all where we have a conversation being had between Lucas and Nate and Tom kind of gets into the mix and the whole idea of there's going to be major changes at ATN, AKA Tom being fired. And that's when the seeds being planted that Shiv didn't say anything on his defense. She just kind of played along with it because she says a little bit later, as he said to her, oh, the Scorpion was a joke. Well, you being fired is a joke. It's like, no, there's certain things you don't play with. And right. someone's livelihood and then calling yeah. someone a Scorpion is not something you say to each other. So mm -hmm. that is definitely a scene that I thought was very interesting. But getting into, again, Ken's talking to Nate. He wants to, he tells him that he wants the deal to go off the table. And Nate kind of, you know, listens to it and kind of listens to him in a moment. But the sidebar between Lucas and Shiv, as they're kind of talking about him doing good, uh, for some reason, I thought that he was going to make a move on Shiv. Like he was going to be like, it felt like that for a kiss or yeah. be like, and she's like, I, oh, I don't. Like, I don't trust Madison in the yeah, room alone yeah. with anybody, to be exactly. honest. Exactly. <laughs> speaks to Shiv, man. She don't play that, bro. She like she'll mm -hmm. go in a, in, a, in a, uh, the lion's den and, and go toe to toe with him. And that's something I always love about Shiv. Uh, but mm -hmm. they have a little sidebar, and she lets him know because this is this is her arena. You know, she used to be in politics, and she's so used to the cutthroat atmosphere. She's guided him just like she was with Gil and all her previous clients. Um, but again, we see Shiv telling him that he's. You know, doing well. And what I want to get your thoughts on, uh, Nine, is she's telling him all this good insight. She's giving him all this good advice. And she does something that a lot of these characters won't do, which is, hey, what am I going to get out of this? For someone of, of Lucas' stature, a lot of the people, like, we know people didn't come to Logan asking him, what can I get out of this? Like, Logan would be like, you don't get anything out of this. But Shiv goes right to it. She's like, listen, man, I've been doing all this stuff for you, giving all the advice. What am I going to get out of this? And he's like, well... You know, I really like you, and what do you want? And she pretty much puts it out on the table. She wants a significant role, and when he takes over the company, a.k.a. CO, uh, CF, uh, or second-in-command um, type of situation, and he's like, it kind of threw him off guard now. I don't know if you got that sense that when he's like, uh, that let's thing, circle back well, and yeah, do yeah. this, right? Yeah, we'll talk about this later after, you know, you do your part, which I feel like Shiv should know that. Yeah, exactly that look right there. Just like, yeah, a bunch of side eye, like, yeah. Bro, I, I, that should right have been there. red flag number one. That mm -hmm. this is the same, not to cut you off, because I want to get your thoughts on it, but this scene reminded me so much of when Logan was playing Shiv that she was going to be the next lead of Waystar. She was he was dragging her along, mm -hmm. feeding her this information, building up her ego, only to take the rug under her. I don't know why Shiv is doing this over again. This is a Logan move. Like, do Logan. everything I want you to do, and mm -hmm. I'm going to pretend to give you something out of it. But nah, take it away, man. Shiv just hasn't learned her lesson, and she's just doing the same thing she did with her dad. Yeah. I, I feel like it is the same thing that I think this is spurned off from what her brothers did to her, right? She was under the assumption assumption that it was going to be them three, right? And then very quickly, immediately afterwards, it was no longer that. It was very clear that it was going to be a kind of boys club, right? And that's what I feel bad for Shiv about because it has it is so much of a boys club. Right. Yes. And she has yep. to fight for every little scrap that she can get. Mm -hmm. um, not always going to make the best move, but at the same time, who can you trust if you've already been pretty betrayed by uh, uh, all of the people in your family? Right. I agree, uh, man. It's it's almost as if do, the, as do you, you just mentioned. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think that Madison could possibly be playing a long con here a little bit of a chess move right with like kind of leaking that uh india information mm. because at that party 
that's what I would have been doing. I would have been telling people, you know, uh, telling different things to different people. Kind of like tell what got out. What comes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, I don't, and, and, and you just mentioned, it speaks to the Alexander Skarsgård of it all, like the way he plays it. Like he's, he, in this episode to me, he played the most vulnerable version of the character we've seen so far. Kind of mm -hmm. almost, I don't want to say like Greg levels of uh, incompetence, but he kind of played it very, he was, he played it as though he didn't, again, he didn't have control of the situation. So to your point, I don't know if it's a play, if it's an act, if he's just really just playing a a, a, um, a sheep in, in wolves clothing or if it's the other way around. So that's a good question, man. I think that he might be playing a long game, but mm -hmm. he seems so off tonight that it, it that it didn't seem purposeful. But mm -hmm. that's the beauty but of this character, man. I don't it know. It feels like he would have. have because he crashed the party, right? Mm -hmm. If you're mm -hmm. going to crash the party, it seems like you're going to come a bit prepared for a plan right. of action. And right. yeah, we didn't get a really any semblance of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, yeah, I was kind of surprised by how off he seemed. Yeah, because he definitely had the upper hand right when he showed up. You you got the other upper hand. Yeah, that yeah. ambush, right? He's a he's an interesting character, man. Again, I love uh, what he's brought to the show thus far. Um, and and before we kind of get into some more of the bigger scenes, I do want to highlight the the Rome and Ken. They find out for so I don't know who told them this, but they found out a little bit about the uh, the Eva situation. They want to use this to their advantage. But this is where Nate uh, is brought back to the table, and Ken's trying to be like, "All right, man, I got some more dirt on him. Let's let's get this ball rolling. Let's try to get this nuke the Luke." And he's and I don't know. Let me know nine. I don't know what was the moment that Nate kind of just disappeared. Like he just didn't want to be involved in it anymore. I don't know. I, I don't think there was a scene that we saw besides when he met Nate in that coat room, and he's like, "Let's let's talk about you know working together and how we can benefit each other." And then the next time he saw Nate. Nate all of a sudden is like, oh, I'm good, man. This is an inappropriate conversation. I want to wipe my hands clean of it. What What do you think changed between that coat room to when he saw Nate again? Um, what's the alternate motive with Nate? Is he just like, I'm tired of the shiv and your family? Like, wh what was the motivation that you think Nate kind of came up with that all of a sudden just kind of not listen to, to his buddy Ken? Well, it was uh, pretty brilliantly said. Um, I'm looking at it right now. I don't feel comfortable with the tenor of this tenor of this conversation mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and he says I, I, I when he says i'm not gil and you're not your dad right mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. are just not him right uh and i'm not trying to be the person that mentored me either right so right. it almost seemed like okay all of this shit was for the past you know, we're not wanting to continue this uh, legacy of just like straight up um, uh, um, these the shady deals or whatever. He wants to actually kind of like play it a bit more straight. And I kind of like at, at a certain point kind of respect that for the fact yeah. that, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't uh, make no move or like talk shit about like Shiv or anything. Yeah, he just seemed like yeah. to just get on top of his business. Mm -hmm. um, and when he found out about all that, he's like, you know, I'm not supposed to be really hearing all of this. Right, 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 right. Uh, but who's to say that he wasn't up on game about some other things too? And he's kind of mm -hmm. like just playing it smart for his own self preservation. Um, mm. But for right now, I think like Nate is in the clear. Like he, I didn't see him do no wrong. Uh, he <laughs> did no wrong. So yeah. right, you know what I'm saying? I hear you, man. I definitely want to uh, uh, speak to the point that you mentioned about him kind of playing the sides. I, it is, I guess, it is something to remember that Nate has dealt with his family. He did. I don't know mm -hmm. how long him and Shiv dated, but I'm sure he's seen his fair share of how the Roy's get down, and it's something that he's not mm -hmm. a fan of, probably. Uh, so I think to, to kind of answer my own question, why did he back out of this deal? I think he's just remembering these are the Roy family. Uh, Logan's out of the picture, but these kids ain't no better than him. So he might just mm -hmm. want to, he knows what he doesn't want to sleep in that bed anymore. So I think maybe he's just like, he's just remembering who he's in business with and with them not really having the head of the snake being there. And these kids are just running around mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. Why are you telling, why, why are you telling me this? Uh, right. Yeah. It's, it's messy. It's very, it very does messy. messy. Yeah. It's going to be uglier yep. and it's going to be just worse uh, as uh, Luke said. So yeah. 
I agree. And shout out to, listen, shout out to Nate, even though I I, I don't like, uh, you know, a man sleeping with another woman who's getting engaged, you know, that's, he's always going to be on my, my dog, my, 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 uh, you know, bad list for that. But he did, he, he was very, I don't know if honorable is the word. He was very classy tonight. You know, the whole mm-hmm. time of it all, how he handled that, this yeah. whole kin of it all. So shout out to Nate. Uh, you know, like I said, yeah. dollar shout store. Jake Jake and all Jake those. Jake <laughs> coming through being a man of honor. Uh, but before we move on, man, let me let me see what the people are talking about. As you said, there's some good comments here. Uh, we got up to 175 of y'all watching us. Appreciate you joining us tonight on this succession after show talking episode seven, uh, vanilla ice and everyone included <laughs> would you so listen uh as maddie says uh nine would you would you rock the vanilla ice tiger king look man is this something that nine's going out think, uh, at the club with i don't think it'll look good on me you know i don't think i could pull that off either man it's yeah. that's, uh, it's uh, uh a it's very got the killmonger bumps on it too <laughs> like <laughs> I, I don't know a bit too spicy for my taste but you know by the way, this is completely random. I wish I would have saved the screenshot. There was a scene where Ken, or not Ken, but um, Greg and um, Lucas were standing next to each other, and Greg's taller than Lucas. How tall is Greg, man? Is he like seven nine? Dude, He's right? Like, I was like, man, Lucas is. Like, <laughs> Greg, how, you, how tall are you, bro? Um, because that was a scar guard, he's the like six, they, six, four, six, five, right? And then so the way he like looks down on everybody, he oh. kind of like has to like snake his neck down yeah, and everything. Man. I was like, Come yeah. on now, Greg, come on now. <laughs> eating your Wheaties, man. The man is just is a, is a giant amongst uh, oh, children. voices in Espanol. Um, says yeah. that Greg is six, eight, scars guard is six, four, six, oh. seven, also. Okay. In there. Um, Damn. Looking at the Google, yeah. Google alerts. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's 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 a different uh and shout out before we move on, shout out to uh NYC with the super chat. Like if you're enjoy exactly thank you, uh NYC. Definitely hit the like button, y'all. It's free, it is free 99. Uh, if you're mm-hmm. on your phone, your tablet, your computer. I don't know if you're watching on your TV, it's really well. I think on your t- on my smart TV, you can hit the like button. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, guys, just hit the like button, it doesn't hurt just anyone, like, it, it doesn't cost button. anything, right? Just do your we, we don't we don't like it. That is part of our jobs to uh, get people to convince people to push that button. But yeah, just do it. Yeah, just do man. it. You know what I mean? Let's push Shia the button. Buff said it best. I know he's not the great person to <laughs> be, uh, quote, but uh, <laughs> just do it. Uh, no, guys, we appreciate you again. If you could, if you could, just hit the like button. I would appreciate it. But mm-hmm. none getting in back into it, man, because I, I don't want to keep us too long. I know you got your things to do, and we got a, 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 a new week to get ahead of us here. Um, so. We get back into the episode here. Greg takes his crack at Lucas, even though he says that he's not his cup of tea. But he's somehow, Greg, again, he's just money hungry or power hungry. He finds his way to get entangled with the Emma and talking about, oh, I'll fire her for you. Again, just doing whatever he can to, to look good in front of anyone. He pretends to do that to fire her. He kind of embarrasses her in front of everyone. And Before she goes that, off. Though. Before yeah. that, how disrespectful was it when he – Blew Blue that vape smoke, smoke. Bro. bro. It wasn't even like a blow smoke. It was like spit like, a little bit. Spit. Those, I was those like, are those are fighting terms for me, man. Like, I forget was like, party hold on a second, Greg. Yeah, man. The, the disrespect and and this. Yeah, yeah man. I definitely good, good that, call that out there. Crazy. Um, that was crazy. Mad disrespectful. Mad disrespectful. Mm-hmm. But Greg. Hey man, he he took it like a champ, I guess. He didn't lose his cool. He just kind of he's. I mean, again, he's he's probably desensitized towards being treat it like that with hanging out yeah. with all these you know tom throughout the years have done more worse things than that um but yes we see uh ebba is upset she's embarrassed because you know her boss slash ex-boyfriend is you know just saying i want to fire her this that and the other but ken and rome you know they take their shot at her uh they go on the balcony and they kind of get some and again you mentioned it nine was this a ploy was this plot was this a plot by manson oh. that's pretending to be you know mm-hmm. uh and you know you're mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. you're, mm-hmm. you're i'm a bad boss you got some dirt on me see where mm-hmm. it goes um but pretending that it's like is, an open secret that yeah. we're gonna act out in front of everybody exactly. like, there's exactly. something kind of like shady about this like it seems like a setup very much so, because as you know, as we learn in this episode, that Shiv told Manson to uh, Manson to be on his best behavior, and that seems to be a very kind of left field type of behavior to kind of you know embarrass your girlfriend or 
not girlfriend, but employee in front of everyone in this scene here. Uh, you know, they're kind of acting childish. So it's it's weird, man. Like I said, that's why I love this character because I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what his next move is. But the next move for Ken in Rome is to try to get information from her. And they get a pretty big nugget, Nine. And that is essentially that the numbers aren't looking that good. She mentioned something about, you know, her her contract or something about being under him till February because of the India situation, so there seems to be some type of ticking time bomb that it will be revealed. Maybe that's like <clears throat> maybe the quarterly meetings with the investors that it will be uh, you know, out there that the numbers are are cooked. Um so we have the moment nine where Ken in Rome tell Shiv the news, and she is completely fabricated. She is completely left she's off guard. Like, oh, damn it! Yeah, she finds out that he's been cooking the numbers, doubling the numbers. the The minutia of it all is Shiv confronts him. If there's some issue with the subscribers, which I think is so is definitely a dig at like Netflix, because if you guys follow Netflix, they don't ever tell you. They'll say. Stranger Things was the highest watched show of our of our program. Yeah, like, what does that mean exactly? What, yeah, when right. we uh, compare that to something, yeah, what is, yeah, yeah, like what does that mean to us as consumers? Like, okay, that's good. Three hundred something. Is like, yeah, uh, like more than ten people watched it. That's what exactly. we'll tell you. We'll tell and you I, that more than. Um, and I thought I read like an article like the way they. Uh, calculate that is like if you watch it for like more than like 10 seconds or something so we know for netflix users that if you just like if you hover over a show it starts to play the show automatically right. uh so yeah i'm pretty sure that was definitely a dig and it, maybe even hbo <laughs> all the streaming services yeah. i don't know how they and this is not to get too deep into the weeds with the wga uh, writer strike that is something that is definitely on the table as far as being more transparent with the numbers it's mm -hmm. definitely something they had in there uh, uh, as far as negotiating tactic. But getting back into the episode, the numbers are being cooked. His, the money that he's, you know, the quick close angle that he's trying to do, his plan is to close quickly. And, hey, maybe by the time all this shakes down, maybe the numbers will be even by then. And, and Shiv's looking at him like, are you an idiot or are you just stupid? Like, what? And, and mm -hmm. that's the moment. And then I want to get your thoughts that her, I don't want to say her plans, but kind of her her thought process of like screwing over her brothers just kind of blew up in her face. Mm -hmm, exactly. Well, I mean, think about it. India. Okay. So because what, what does it say here? I just looked it up. It said there's currently 1.4 billion people in India. Yeah. So if you're fudging numbers there, like, and you're saying like, Oh, it would make sense if there was two Indians, <laughs> like, bro, that's <laughs> That is so in the many world, people. Like, oh, like, oh, can you fix it? And he's like, oh, yeah, just go ahead and fix it for me, Shiv. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, they say uh, 1.8 billion now oh, in the wow. chat here. And wow. I'm saying like, yeah, that that could be a pretty big number that you're fudging there. Yes. That could actually be uh, a monumental, like, it's going to take down the whole company. Huge. Completely oh, take yeah. down the share price or whatever. And if he's saying he's banking on this deal to go through to, you know, alleviate those problems, then he's in a tough he's spot. A Ooh. Shout tough out to spot. Shiv. Shout out to Sarah Snook with the with the looks in this mm -hmm. episode. There's so many great <laughs> moments. That she's just like, what? Always, always serving looks. Always serving she's looks. Always. always um, man. But yeah, it, it, but it kind of felt good to see her like be like, ah, you thought. You thought yeah. you had them, you know. You thought it was <laughs> not today, Missy. Yeah, yeah. Not today, oh, Missy. Man. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. it's blowing up in their faces again. Whether it's the Rome of it all, which we'll talk about this Rome and Jerry scene here in a second, but Rome, uh, you know, Kendall as we're talking about, it's, it's just all crumbling apart, man. It's like even though their dad was despicable, non, uh, really wasn't the most loving father. He some somehow, some way, kind of kept everything afloat. This isn't, they're now getting their hands dirty and they're seeing what, and I'm not condoning Ro, uh, Logan's actions and this being a terrible guy, but he kept their, he kept his kid, his kids' hands clean, Nine. They are now dancing. Too clean. Monkeys. Too clean, right? They're now yes. seeing the conniving people, the lies, the backstabbing, the numbers being fudged. This is what they Logan are not on a regular serious basis. serious people. They are not, not serious people. people. Yes, uh, and yeah, they prove that to each other. Um, and to the audience every episode. Mm -hmm. And the thing that uh, um, Shiv has to her advantage, though, is that 
because their family is so used to being so conniving, she mm. could be like, okay, I was screwing you guys over. Now here's the plan. This is the information <laughs> that I know. And they would be like, oh, okay, cool. All right, l- let's roll with that. And they would move on. They will just like move on from that shit. She has the ammo nine. She knows about the the Ebba blood giving situation. She now knows about the cook number. She like you just said, she could do that, but will she do that? Is the question because mm-hmm. it's at the end of the day they 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 lie and they cheat and they steal and they do all these things yeah. to one up each other. So will she use this to her advantage? Will she somehow find a way to? I don't know. I don't want to say blackmail uh, Matson, but. I don't know, man. This is 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 gonna either blow up on her face or she's gonna find a way to survive, as as Tom says a little bit later in this episode. But getting back into it before we get into my favorite scene in this episode, I want to talk briefly about the um the Rome and Jerry of it all. Nine. Jerry pretty much very similar to you know a mic drop moment of what we've seen very much so in this episode and various episodes in this in this season so far. But Jerry drops the mic on on Rome. Nine. She tells him, listen, bro, I'm mad. I'm upset. Yeah, I'm at this party, whatever the case may be. But here are my terms, Nine, or uh, uh, Rome. This is what I hold over you. Uh, mm-hmm. The next five years, I can come with you with a deal where I ca- I got the receipts, all those pictures you sent me. If you change my narrative, I will destroy you. And she just pretty much walks away and says to him, you could have had it all if you would have just kind of kept me under, you know, kept things professionally. Uh, you know, there. I could have led you to the promised land. Been, yeah, yeah, we would have seen Zion, right? We would have been on the top of the mountain. And <laughs> listen, Roman right now can do nothing but lose. And he did that so quickly where he really didn't realize that he is taking away one of his, like, one true friends that actually, like, kind of knows his wavelength or whatever can kind of handle him knows when he's going out of pocket he cut that off terrible decision especially if it's jerry because she low-key is the goat right someone that you would always want on your side so once you poke that she knows jerry knows her worth she knows that she could, you know, she could be out of here, you know, with a uh, hundred, two hundred million, like a golden parachute good. or whatever, and good. be good. Mm-hmm. And you messed that up because once you challenge her character and like uh, uh, her decision making, mm-hmm. that's when you know you y- you out of pocket. You out of pocket, homie. Well said, man. Listen, this is the way I look at it. We know that probably Logan's a, a sexist, uh, that he probably devalues women. He looks at them lesser than the the fact that Jerry has managed to stay in this power position with the way we know Logan moves speaks <laughs> volumes to her character. So the fact that Roman Good thought point. that he could screw her over is just another reason of why these kids aren't serious. Jerry is no one you want to ruffle her feathers because she Mm -hmm. she got the family receipts. She got the (laughs) D-picks to put him out there and destroy his life. (laughs) So crazy that he would even think about that being acceptable. And one of like the coldest um, Jerry lines um, this season was she said, I I danced this company Mm. through a fucking thunderstorm without getting wet. Uh, <laughs> and she listen, did though. She was like, "Young, strong, the writers of this show, man. I need, I mm-hmm. need a, I need a, uh, an album with these quotes, bro. So they many good quotes, fire, so yeah. much fire. But Gems. I couldn't agree with you more, man. Uh, nine, Jerry is no one you want to play with. And she let Roman know she can drop that bomb whenever she wants. So shout out to Jerry. Uh, mm-hmm. Love her character. Love that she's letting." Rome know that she is she's the captain you know if, if push comes to shove she's going to be all right so I, I don't know man this is one definitely one of my favorite scenes next to a scene that we're going to get here get to here in a little bit but we do see Roman like a little child you know he just got put down by his mom he has a meltdown and he's going to Connor with that negative energy he's trying to feed off of what she gave him and try to give it to someone else and it doesn't really work out in his advantage and I'm speaking to the scene nine where he comes at Connor and is like listen Connor you're not serious. No one cares about you. No one takes you seriously. Da 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 da. You're gonna do what we're saying, and he snaps. And this is where you know Kenny even steps in. He's like, "Hey, Rome, calm down, bro. This is our this is family." Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, let's let's not do this in front of everyone. And then uh, a moment that Don't we kind of talked heads. about. Yeah, <laughs> the moment that we talked about, but just to kind of fully elaborate on it and to get your thoughts on the nine, Willa stepping up for her man 
And, and even before that, the fact that Connor said, I just need one person. What's the quote that everyone makes fun of Lady Gaga when she's like, if there's 99 people in the room, I just need one person in there or something like that, where it's essentially, I just need one person to believe in me to really become the person I want to be. And, and that was definitely a moment that I, I, even though I don't really care too much for Connor and Willa, that's probably their best moment of the show for me, that she, that he has the confidence in her and vice versa. And she steps up for him, man. Again, I know we talked on it briefly, but just that I, moment. I, okay. you, so now I, I only got the screenshot here. Yeah. I, I, I You could pull that up. And okay. And this fire. Fire. Like, yo, know, I am about to big dog you so hard right now. Uh, I think Roman said something like, oh, just eat the carrot. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. It's like, bro, I'm not one of these people. Mm. Right, like, <laughs> uh, like I'm, like I, I committed to running for president, and mm. you think I've been in this uh, situation, um, just to get one up on each other about, you know, who's going to be running the company, or I've been trying to uh, uh, connive or anything. No, I, yeah. he's the only one that is like, I'm good to go on this thing, and I'm ready to just put it all up. So I really like this conviction here. And when Willa, uh, uh, that line, there's one person here who doesn't think I'm a joke. Yep. And he know, like, I think that's one of the best things about Connor's character, that he is very self-aware or he's become more self-aware um, throughout the seasons of right. how people view him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a really good... Uh, I don't know. That's a really good character development. Subtle, but very nice. I couldn't have said it better myself, Nine. Uh, you spoke on it beautifully, man. And, and again, like I said at the beginning of this episode, that I would have never imagined that these would be the two strongest and most uh, you know, reliant on each other couple of this entire show. And here it is. Here it is, mm -hmm. man. If, and again, I feel like the show hasn't done the best job of really fleshing out Connor, but this relationship has definitely kind of come full circle. And it was a moment I definitely appreciated because – you know, just thinking about all the moments that he's been, uh, again, I think you touched on it earlier, the fact that they lost their dad, it was almost like, yeah, it was sad for him, but it's almost like he can finally be, he doesn't have to finally have the pressure of impressing his dad. He can now uh, be his own person for the first time. I, I would say Connor's probably in his late 50s, early 60s. So for the first time in his life, he doesn't have his father under him and to try to impress him. He only has this woman who now, if we talked about it earlier, who semi loves him in her own way. Um, and now that he has someone to back him, which I, I would imagine he's never had Roman, uh, Ken, Shiv, and more importantly, never had his dad support, but now he has someone to back him. And I think he, uh, he appreciates that. And uh, what a beautiful thing to see, Nye. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Uh, you got a super chat here. Um, we got a super chat. Let's, right let's check it out, man. Let's and check it, it out. Kind of nails it. <clears throat> let's pull it up here and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up the episode <laughs> with another fire scene but uh nyc says i love how connor stands up from the couch to deliver that line and you see roman um have to shift from looking down at connor to looking up at him that is a great comment uh i love that great way to point that out and again I, I, going back to i love that it's delusional yeah. nyc too delusional because NYC. it's like <laughs> is that is this a con head <laughs> <You're right. laughs> we got a con head on the uh one? that's funny but no I, um, I definitely think uh connor has some great moments in this episode mm -hmm. and that scene that you pulled up was fire and i i don't know which one is better let me know nine and everyone in the chat was this line that you brought up the best line from connor this season or was it when connor in episode two said you know, my superpower is I don't need love. Mm. Which one mm. was the most fire Connor line for you, Nine? And everyone in chat, let me know. Episode two, Connor, no love is a superpower, or I just need one person. I mean, in me. she's a damn. Man. I mean, he, he got my love for that <laughs> right there. And I officially became a con hat on that one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> they said that Willow looks like a young Joe Biden. Oh, as that voice <laughs> and yeah, uh, Madison was right there too. Jeez, he was, he was just sitting there watching this. He, what did he say? Uh, family or making fun of them? Uh, uh, even though he had his own. You, you got my vote. He, he's, <laughs> she's sweet as she like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, what's there? I'll I'll put a poll in the chat and we'll we'll respond to it at the end of the stream here. Which I'm I'm looking on the YouTube's guys. I'm seeing we got uh, almost 
180 some people, but only 87 likes. Come on, guys, help me Come out. On, hit the now. like button. Hit the like oh button. God. Um, nine, can you uh see what the people are talking about while I create this chat, right? Or this this poll? Yeah, absolutely, guess, uh, absolutely. Um, online. I really been liking it on what voices uh, and Espanol says back in episode three when Logan told Roman to fire Jerry. I thought Logan was basically daring Roman to do it but didn't think he would have the guts to do it. It did really feel like that. Um, and, it, it, and it's kind of like tragic for what Roman has been going through because he did like stab his best friend in the back and then had to uh, deal with the fact that he wasn't going to get any love for that. Mm-hmm. Not only was he going to lose his friend, his father just passed away. He's not going to get any type of validation. He's not going to be moving up the ranks at all for mm-hmm. it. Uh, I mean, it did turn out into uh, for in his favor um, because he's like co-running running the company. But mm-hmm. since he doesn't have any source of validation, uh, does he even really want it? Who knows? I we right. really do not know what uh, Roman wants at this point, other than the fact that whenever he feels a little bit diminished, mm-hmm. um, he takes it out on other people. Going on that firing tirade, um, having that conversation with Jerry, realizing that she's completely out, and then wanting to immediately make moves to uh, for Connor, right? Not realizing that like Connor is not someone you can just fire. You can't yeah. just get rid of Connor. Right. He's out here, right? <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, I, I kind of, um, you know, I want to feel bad for Roman, but he is so despicable. Like, I feel like the fan base has also kind of taken this arc where, oh, we love Roman. He's kind of, like, quirky and funny and cool or whatever, right? He doesn't really yeah. care. But, no, we actually realize that he cares a lot and he's so misguided. Yeah, uh, he's not that laid back, you know, snarky individual that we thought he was. He's deeply troubled. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, man. Uh, well, well said, man. And uh, and then, by the way, for all those who are on watching us on YouTube, there is a poll in the chat for the best role or uh, Connor line this season. Was it episode two? His superpower is no love, or uh, in tonight's episode that uh, he's no joke and he has Willow on his side. Let us know in the chat, and we'll try to get. I'm gonna probably have one more poll. At the end of this episode, as far as who is the favorite character of tonight's episode. But let us know uh, with the poll right now that's in the chat. Let us know what you all think the best Connor line was tonight or episode two. But getting back to it, my man, um, we get we get several confrontations in this episode, not only from a couple's perspective. We just saw Rome and Jerry kind of go at it. But now we get the uh, the alpha males, or at least they think they're alphas. At least one of them might be. The Your numbers are gay. Let's get to it now. I'm talking Ken, yeah, that is like the most. Uh, let's get to it. <laughs> Ken versus Lucas, my man. We have Ken, who again, uh, someone mentioned in the comments. He's like, cool, cool family, and and you know, Ken's like, you know what, man, my brother got at you last week, but let me tell you what I think about you. So they're playing kind of softball, kind of playing the room in front of again. That everyone's showing their hand in this episode, just revealing themselves in the worst way possible. But first. Um, Lucas comes at Ken and he says that, you know, oh, great. Oh, no, no, no. First it was Ken who took the first shot, talking about the numbers of it all. Then Lucas shoots back at him and says, you know, great presentation last week, talking about his dad and using him as part of his uh, marketing ploy. And then, as you just mentioned, Lucas, like, nice burn, bro. Your numbers are gay. <laughs> what, is that e- what does that even mean? <laughs> and then he says, uh, and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's you have the audacity to say that while wearing that golden ass coat. Yeah, it's like, what, what is that <laughs> on my man's head? And then, you know, again, they're all they're putting the cards on the table, and then they hug and kiss each other. It's like nine. I don't know whether to just scratch my head, applaud at the scene. What did you think about these two again? These alpha males, or at least they think they are. Uh, what did you think about this scene and uh, how it all played out, man? So alpha, so sigma, omega yeah. males here. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, these are so terrible. These these, these are terrible people. Um, was not impressed by that showcase at all. Yeah. I was impressed by the acting in it, but I was like, oh, yeah, wow, yeah, these yeah. are Perfect. literally children. Mm-hmm. And again, um, let's not like even gloss over the fact that this is pretty true to life, right? Like 
they are we do have these parties with the super rich elites or whatever that are deciding crazy uh uh implications for the nation yep. right yeah and um mm-hmm. and as much as we uh see it as like a red versus blue situation yeah, yeah a lot of them bump elbows to each other with each other mm-hmm. uh uh you know try to mingle and um make decisions in together but in private right, right. and um it does kind of feel like this little um peak into what that would actually be like. Mm. Um, and they're both bros. They're both <laughs> like bro for t- they, they seem like fraternity douchebags yeah. or whatever I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but uh, 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 I, I, I can't get out. <laughs> no, you did. Hey, for Chris, let me know, let me know, man. I, I think you were speaking some, some fire, bro. I mean, these two these two guys is so true. Uh, and not to get into the political side of like our reality, but it's a lot of people that make these big decisions for not our country, but just other countries around the world are some of the most incompetent, most impatient, uh, unsympathetic, unhuman like people that are making these huge decisions and they act like children. Like mm-hmm. the fact that they're having this kind of tit for tat in front of, again, as they mentioned this episode, there are 40 people in this room that can literally change you from being a nobody to being the on People's Magazine. Like these are influencers that yeah. can change your life. And the fact that they're bickering and arguing over these little minute childish things is mind boggling. And these are the people that are making the calls of who's going to be leading the president, who's going to be leading the, you know, the U S and stuff like that. It is, it is so true. Like you said, nine, that it are literally sometimes uh, just idiots that are making these mm-hmm. decisions. And this scene perfectly encapsulates how schoolyard exactly. drama, like, exactly. Oh, I heard you were talking about my dad yeah. and I am going to like, call you out. Your numbers are gay is like something you would say. In like, like literally like, like <laughs> right. <laughs> what are you saying? Bro? Like who talks like that anymore? Like what? What does that mean? I don't even know what it means, man. It's like your numbers are happy or but I don't know. I don't right. know. It is uh wow. it was a very interesting fight, if we want to call it that. Uh let us know yeah, in the comments. But now, and it's time to get to the main event, my friend, and that is the rat versus the scorpion. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, I'm going to try to break down this scene and get your thoughts on it, but we have Can, time. I, I'll be one second. I'll be Take your time, man. I'm going to set the, I'm gonna yeah. set the scene up for, my, for our audience here, and, I, and we'll get you back uh, when you get in. Uh, so listen, guys, we are at the point in the episode that I was just on the edge of my seat. Uh, shout out to my new seat, by the way, uh, Ewen Racing Chair. I'm going to have a, a new sponsorship here, uh, thanks to you all, more importantly. But listen, man, the set to scene, Tom versus Shiv, Rat versus Scorpion. Tom's tired. We've been talking about it all night. Tom has been ready to go to bed before these people even came to the party, and he is fed up, y'all, because this whole entire night, not only is Nate there, not only is there's, uh, you know, people in his house that he might not be the biggest fans of, one being Nate, like I mentioned, but then in his own home, may I mind you all at home, he has people in his house whispering that he might be fired. Let's, let's just put that in perspective. You're in your own house, you're paying your own you know, mortgage or rent or whatever case may be, and you got people in your own home talking about you being fired. And not, and to add more fuel to that fire, your wife is there listening to this, not saying uh, and not shooting those rumors down, not batting down those comments. She's just letting it happen and letting the fire grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So now the fire has grown and the fight goes from being upset, being ready for bed. He goes outside, which is the right thing to do. He stepped away from the situation. He's like, I'm tired. I don't want to fight. Let me step out of the situation. But Shiv, being who she is, you got the Roy in her blood. She wants that fight. She wants that confrontation because they live for this, right? She goes outside. She is, you know, taking these kind of light blows. And Tom lets her know that he doesn't like the fact that people are joking about him being fired, which I think for Shiv's point of view, it's like, hey, the same way you were joking about that scorpion earlier today is my way of kind of getting back at you. Like, this is what we do, right, Tom? We take digs at each other. Toxicity, not a good, not a good, uh, you know, uh, mix when you're just talking about getting divorced and now you're back together. There's, you know, this baby that no one knows about, but neither here nor there. Tom, 
lets it go. He tells her, all right, Shiv, you want to have this, you know, he says, let's just put it out there. We're outside in the, in the air, which by the way, I was certain that one of them was going to be thrown off the balcony, but this is not Game of Thrones. They have the conversation and I got my man Nine back here. Nine, from this point on, he calls her, you know, you're a bitch, you're a survival, you're always going to make it out of, you know, she calls him a rat and a coward, this, that, and the third. And he goes from, you know, I really do love you. Oh, you don't love me. You just love the fact of being with me. You're just screwing me to be a part of the DNA. You're money hungry. You're power hungry. And they're just going back and forth. And then she cuts maybe the deepest, or maybe he does. I don't know which one. Let us know at home. Him telling her you would never be a good mom or her telling him, you know, I never liked you. I don't like you. I never liked you. He tells her, I don't know why you married me. Nine, take it away. What cut the deepest? Who cut the deepest? Whose side were you on with this argument? Were you ever at a point uh, on Shiv's side, on Tom's side? Take it away. Um, so I'm going to preface this by saying that this seemed so personal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of people in some toxic relationships would have been like oh they're they're literally us right now <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> because boy oh boy um i would say well i actually tweeted out uh the quote that tom said he said that you are too transparent to find in a book mm. and i thought about that mm. i was like Damn. <laughs> that is, yeah Damn, yeah, like that is uh uh like you're you're so like skin deep, so shallow, so broken. that is, is broken. Um, would not be a good mother. Like wow. that felt you kill very my it, wow. dude. When I I feel like Shiv was out of pocket because he he was coming from a place where like you know I just had to like convene with all of these people you invited yeah. your ex here mm -hmm. i gotta like on the low uh uh you know be cool with knowing about you snaking around or whatever mm -hmm. and then on top of that while i'm doing all of this for us you're telling people and go along with this narrative that i'm about to lose my job that i'm going to be axed and you're like oh yeah okay when what he wanted at the beginning was at least to be like you know we're doing this party together yeah right yep so it's that kind of like lack of partnership on uh his side that i feel very empathetic for mm. but he did say some things that i was like <sighs> he hates. like yeah he went a bit too hard but yeah shiv really cannot like own up to nothing though there was so much to be said at this moment. And again, I don't know if I have a dog in either one of these fights because they both cut deep and it's so much truth in both of it. But again, it, it kind of put in perspective and I, I, I didn't, I won't say I forgot about it, but yeah, it is kind of screwed up that he proposed to her when her dad was on at that time in season one, presumably maybe on his deathbed. Um, he proposed to her then at a very vulnerable, as she said, a very vulnerable state that I was in. And what was I going to say? No, and have that on my mind. You know, I just said no to my mm -hmm. you know, potential, uh, uh, you know, uh, partner in life. But my dad's in in the hospital, so it, it's th their relationship was doomed from the start. Because that, to me, was if you really if and I'm putting myself in Shiv's shoes. I guess if we want to, if you want to be Tom in this particular case, and I'll be Shiv. I guess if I'm Shiv, like Tom, you came at me and asked to marry me when my dad was potentially going to die. And this power shift was going to be, and you're going to be, you're, you just came up on a, on a, on a, on a lick. You just mm -hmm. married into this family after maybe potentially the king of the, of the family's dying. You since day one have always strived to get power. I was just a ladder for you to climb on to get your family as she throws her fa his family under into the mix of them just being money hungry and always striving to be someone important or be the Joneses. Nine man, it was it was a conversation. I didn't think that you know we we've had a couple blowouts between these two, but this was the best one thus far. And I and I watched a little bit of the after show when they mentioned that we don't really see them yell and argue. This was the best, not only the best scene between them, but the most explosive scene between them. And it was the acting was superb. 
Yeah, I I think the acting was absolutely superb here. Um, they were having um, and, and it seemed like they were having like fun with it too. I mean, not like that you could translate onto uh, that yeah. actually translated yeah. onto camera. Yeah, but it seemed like they really wanted to be Have doing this open. scene, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where uh, it, and it feels like a very good mirror to the end of uh, last episode. Um, mm. or their conversation was that last episode or was the episode before? But you know, uh, uh, them actually like, uh, um, well, I thought they were on the same page about what we they do it. and how they yeah. act, right? They put all the cards on the table, so then, right? It, yeah, um, <laughs> and but. This episode seemed to be like, okay, no, they have so many more grievances towards each other right. that um, are so valid, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I'm having a hard time. I'm, I'm having a hard time siding with Shiv because she doesn't seem to have any allegiances with anybody. Right. And the thing is, it seemed like Tom was willing to form that allegiance, right? right With the understanding right. of them both knowing, or, you know, just like a toxic power couple, right? Right. We'll be working be... together, but for yeah. like a toxic goal or whatever, um, to have us like be good or be safe. But now that is when it, I, I was very confused by the dialogue here because of the fact that Tom brought up her being a mother. So right, Shiv, right. Did Shiv did he I still don't think she's told him that she's pregnant. I think that, I think that, that conversation him. stemmed from season three when they talked about, you know, her eggs and all that stuff. So I think that was just the continuation of that conversation, more so than her telling him that she's pregnant, because I think it would have been like we would have seen that. Like I think that would have been a scene you show. Tom finding right. out the dad, or maybe not the dad. So I think that that conversation stemmed from season three when she said she was going to mm -hmm. freeze her eggs and she wanted to be a better mother than her mother was to her. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, man, there's some really disgusting uh, things that they said to each other. That I don't think you, I don't know if you could come back from this, man. I think that this was, they tried, you know, it was an episode and a half that they hooked up and was having their honeymoon stages all over again, a brand new page per se. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, now I think there was there was never a foundation to really build upon. Like you can have these type of blowouts, but you know at the end of the day that your person has your back. But neither one of them has each other's back. She's a scorpion. Mm -hmm. He's a rat. She told him on the night of being married that she wants to have an open relationship. He mm -hmm. proposed to her when his dad was at a low point. Um, you know, she he sold her out to the father to her, her dad, which is something mm -hmm. she never. So it's just this was never going to work out. <laughs> uh one of the previous seasons one of the best quotes like i think the hurt that i feel with you would be less than the hurt that i feel without you or mm. something like that when they're sitting at yeah, the beach and i was like yep. Yep. yeah tom you should have kind of like stuck with you that because you, yeah. you you knew that <laughs> but now my question is if shiv has not told tom about her pregnancy or whatever yeah yeah. Did it seem like she was kind of having a sense of like, oh, we are going to be because uh, the text messages is like, oh, yeah, thanks for the they've yeah, been they going at it like rabbits. Bunnies. Right. Yeah, man. And yeah. it kind of seemed. Do, do you think that he she was going to play him? I mean, I don't know if it's oh, like, like Tom's uh, baby. Well, all this time like, we've been having sex that I'm I'm pregnant all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly. And then <sighs> reveal it to him at, like in a little bit of time. Like I don't know if she's like that diabolical right. or whatever, but it did cross my mind just with how she has been kind of yeah. Snaking. That's a good question, Nye. And, and listen to anyone watching us, um, you know, especially my doctors and nurses and people that are very familiar with the whole uh, baby uh, situation of getting pregnant and whatnot. But you know, I'm I'm not I'm not too sure, Nye. But I think again, we know that from episode three, she was twenty what twenty weeks pregnant, which is um, you know a little over five months. I don't know 
I know there's a, and I, and I never, you know, have had a partner that was pregnant, but I, you know, from movies and shows and people that I know that had kids, there's a portion in the pregnancy when the, when the woman, uh, has a point where she's very, um, let's just say, uh, uh, wants to get down. She wants, she's very much so, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> hormones are, are at, at an all time high and, and, you know, she wants to get busy. So maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's her trying to get him in the lick and trying to make it seem like she got her, you know, cause the math wouldn't be mathing. If you're like, wait, we just got back together. And now all of a sudden six months later, you're pregnant and having a baby pop out versus nine months of pregnancy. I don't know mm -hmm. if that is, if it's that angle more so than I think she's just like, she's horny. <laughs> she's yeah. a woman that's been kind of, you know, her, her and her husband's been on the rocks and mm -hmm. I don't think Shiv has been messing around with any, well, we'll see who this dad is. But Does the timeline match up with it being Tom's baby, even if? <sighs> that's the thing. I think from season three, when she's, when he, you know, sold her out, I think between three and four, we, we skipped like maybe three or four months that they were kind of on the rocks and didn't speak after he snaked on her. So I, I don't know if it's math and man, I think she might think he's dumb enough to not even question it because he is so money hungry. And it's like, if I, if, if she's wanted me to be the baby's daddy, that's a good thing mm -hmm. for me that I can, can be this father of this child that may or may not be mine. I'm winning anyway, because mm -hmm. I got, you, you got my baby. I'm married to you. I'm winning, but I don't with, know. Uh, <laughs> you're messing with her yeah. for her DNA, as she said. As she said, man. And there's got probably royalty, a lot of got royal inside my DNA. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite scene in the episode, man. And this this it's uh yeah. I don't know whose side I'm on. Let us know in the chat, guys. Are you team Shiv, Team Tom? Oh my team gosh. none of them. Let me know. They Let said me know. it may be Luke's maybe. Yeah. Oh, be, oh no. I, I doubt that. I, I, I doubt, I doubt, that. doubt that. that. Yeah. I would I would put like her getting herself pregnant from, you know, uh, I don't, I can't think of the medical terms, but when you put your, someone's eggs in you, I would think she in would vitro, in, in vitro, vitro. I would think she would do yeah. that before she would have some mm -hmm. Lucas get her pregnant or even some random guy of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we never know, man. We get three episodes. Uh, the, a little bit of a clarification here in the chat saying that her next appointment was scheduled for 20 weeks. She was, she's not exactly at 20 weeks yet. Oh, okay. I'm thinking she's okay. somewhere between two to four months. Gotcha. Um, but either okay. way, she's going to be starting to show soon. Sooner than later, man. Sooner than no. later. So we'll see how she handles that. But wrapping this conversation up before we call it a night nine, we, we end with the scene between um, Ken and his um, uh, godfather, Frank, who who's always had his back throughout all the, the time. Yeah. He's always, Frank has always been there for Ken. Uh, and they've always had that kind of friendship and, 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 and bond. We got a reverse Viking situation on our hands nine where Ken proposes to Frank that let's just tank this deal. First time Frank's hearing about this. He's like, I don't want to hear it. I didn't hear this. But then he tells him that the numbers are being cooked. He's been making up his numbers. And Frank, how about we do this? How about Waystar buys Gojo and do the reverse Viking? And not only that nine, but not getting Rome and Shiv involved. And he tells Frank, we can be better than my dad ever was. So That's actually that, a fantastic plan. <laughs> so we, we end there, but then we the actual last scene is seeing Tom and seeing mm -hmm. Shiv in, in their beds mm -hmm. by themselves. And there's this look on Tom's face. And if you even take into account the trailer that we got at the end of this episode, Nine, I wouldn't be surprised. And also, too, before we wrap up, you know, Tom, at this point, exhausted. All right, guys, y'all don't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bit deuces. <laughs> Tom was hilarious. <laughs> but, Nine, there's a look. So I want to get your thoughts on the Ken situation, reverse Viking. But I also want to get your thoughts on this look that Tom has on his face. It's almost like a look of, like, the ball was rolling. And it seems like he had, and again, based on the trailer, he might screw everyone over. He might mm -hmm. throw a, a monkey wrench into this whole equation. You know, again, I know he's the head of ATN and we talked about messing up the numbers and he might mess up the poll numbers and might have one candidate be in position, uh, AKA Connor. He kind of seemed Nine. like that. Mm. What do we got going with this look on his face? What do we think about Ken's plan? Talk to me. And I've been there before. I mean, for real. Um, Laying in bed, I, I was tired all day, but now I'm laying in bed and I cannot sleep a wink. Right? Oh, I just was staring man, at the ceiling the like that's ah, the worst. I can't wait to get to bed. Now you're damn. like your brain's going a thousand miles per minute. Right. Um. And you know, with Tom, I think that 
whatever he's going to do, he's, he's going to perform. Um, I really like how this season um, has been going with, like, because of what we know from next episode, hopefully this isn't, like, any type of spoiler. If you guys haven't seen the preview for next episode, uh, it should be picking up literally hours after this because it's going to be the election day polls and Tom has a busy schedule tomorrow as running ATN trying to um, make sure everything goes right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, if they're going to kind of um, play off of the uh, real world aspects of, um, you know, uh, you can imagine like how crazy that uh, 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 situation would be if it's based off of the Trump Biden election day. Right. And uh, all of these different things that were being pushed uh, for the narrative. Um, I feel like we won't be seeing anything uh, from Tom that's going to like just critically destroy his career or like, you know, put anything at risk. But he's Mm -hmm. definitely not going to be siding with anything that Shiv does. Right. Right. So just right. even having Shiv be around and stating her agenda to anybody yeah. means that she has a inherent antagonist within Tom, right? right. right. <laughs> and right. that's going to definitely... So I don't think it's going to be a monkey wrench within, like, whatever ATN or whatever Kendall mm-hmm. is cooking up or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Roman is doing, but yeah. it will be a monkey wrench within whatever Shiv is going to do. Ooh, I can't wait to find out now. But I guess uh, so. So we got to your point on that, and I think you said it so uh, so great, man. But your your thoughts on the kin of it all, the reverse Viking of it all, throwing his brother and sister off of their ship of brotherhood and sisterhood and being one big happy family and bigger than my dad ever was. Ken trying to do this behind his brother and sister's back. Will it work? Will Frank decide to work with him? Ken on top. Waystar acquires Gojo. Ooh. Reverse Viking. And, and, and to throw another monkey wrench in that, what is the deal with the Pierce deal? They haven't closed on that because mm-hmm. they didn't get the money for the wait, the Jobo. So are they going right. to be sued for not buying Pierce? Because so many things are up in there. So much, so much. Now, what do you? Because what was that deal going for? That was like that a, was. Ooh, they did like ninety or something. Lower. Yeah, it was much lower than what Matson offered them. Jesus, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna look at it while you uh, just give me your thoughts. I'm gonna try to see if I can find that number right quick. Well, I do want to point out that. I don't know if anyone else in the chat or anybody's watching here is like an economist or is able to shed some light on the numbers here because yikes, it felt like it feels like none of the numbers actually make sense. I've traded a stock or two. I've been on Robin hood. I got the Robin hood app or whatever. Um, <laughs> I, uh, 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 I've lost some money on Bitcoin before gained some money too, but I really am trying to have a, a I'm, I'm trying to figure out how it makes sense within the acquisition because it feels like they just throw out any number. Whereas in the earlier seasons, it didn't seem like they were worth, you know, the full 192. It didn't feel like, uh, or Waystar was worth the full 192. I can't remember exactly what Logan's deal was to Pierce um, in season two, but it just it's kind of weird. Like I, I'm not really sure, like uh, how it all makes sense with the numbers. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I think they, the numbers of it all. I think they. Uh, I'm sure thing. someone out there is probably like, yeah, it's legit, it's accurate. But I think, yeah, it seems like it's kind of said, whenever they yeah. talk money without a banker or lawyer, I take it with a grain of salt. And that's what I'm feeling too. Is like kind of like, okay, these numbers aren't set in stone. They're kind of like just talking big game here. But when it goes down to the nitty gritty, uh, <clears throat> you know. But for 140 for. Uh, okay, I got the without ATN and right with ATN, it's adding in 50 billy. Well, or, I'm looking at so the, the deal that they offered, uh, Pierce was was uh, Logan was I think at was seven and then he went up to like okay, we'll do nine and he said okay, 10, but then the the, the, the kids got it for I think 15, uh, 15 billion by the way. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So it was much lower. They, they're, it's always been that Logan was always on top of them, but the Pierce acquisition would, would be a much lower stake than, um, than um, what the, what the acquisition of Waystar is. So yeah, it was, it was 50 million that the kids got Pierce for. Kind of surprises me just because it's like, um, you know, if ATN and Pierce were kind of like competitors, how right. are they getting another now, yeah. like 50 billion? I think because Logan ATN, not only yeah. is in, in, politics but he has the theme parks he has a studio where i think right, pierce was yeah. kind of like again not a, a huge step down but they're not in the same tax bracket per se right uh, to, they i think they competed with them on a news cycle but they don't compete with them when it comes to like actual wealth and being like you know we have so much in our repertoire and our portfolio that it doesn't come close to what the again that just speaks to who logan really was and it just really puts in perspective how big of a conglomerate he is mm -hmm. and was because uh, we know he's no longer on the show, but yeah, man, it was a, yeah, it was fifteen is what they got Pierce for. So, okay. but again, my thing is, you now have went from selling your dad's company to now keeping your dad's company to now buying Kojo to now buying Pierce and not having your family involved. It's messy. It's messy. Now is what we're getting at. It's a messy. Mm -hmm. messy yeah, situation. it's super messy. Ooh, Just I looking at the numbers for me because yeah. oh, <laughs> I was just kind of like numbers, curious about that. I was like, okay, yeah, they start requires Gojo. Something that maybe one day, I, we, me and you, nine, and everyone in chat, we'll be talking those uh, those numbers one day. Uh, <laughs> but I guess the, so. A couple of things before we wrap up, nine, and, and get a couple more comments before we wrap up. I've heard for many, many weeks now and during the press junkets that when, when the cast and the creators were, were questioned, what's the episode that stands out to you all? None of them said episode three, which was the bombshell of Logan's death. Everyone has said, and the writer, Jeremy, not Jeremy, but um, uh, Jesse uh, Armstrong, the creator and writer of the show, said that the episode that everyone will be talking about is episode eight, which is next week. So we're in for a treat nine. I don't know what that means. And, and also one also a little nugget that I found out this week from um, little trades online is they're saying that the finale of this show will be 90 minutes long, which is an hour and 30 minutes of length, which I do think that will be the funeral episode. Mm. So nine, we are in for a treat, not only next mm. week, but also we know HBO is infamous for having great, you know, Penultimate uh, episodes, and then of course, mm -hmm. most of the time they stick the landing. Hopefully, they stick the landing with the finale. But nine final thoughts, man, before we wrap up, what are you anticipating seeing next week? And then your thoughts on an hour and 90 minutes or an hour and 30 minute finale of succession. Wait, wait, so you're saying next week is the penultimate? Or next week is the episode that all the writers and creators say in this episode that we'll have people talking for the entirety of this, this season. Oh, okay. and the finale is 90 minutes long. Okay, so it's uh, uh, it's only two episodes left or three episodes. Yeah, episode eight, nine, only... and then ten. Okay, three okay. left, my friend. Or three left here. Okay, so um, yeah, I I feel like next week it looked really good on the uh, preview. preview yeah. I was, you know, again, Succession knows that it's good at these bottled episodes. It knows that you can really they they can really flex all of the people when they just have them in a room talking, right? We don't need um, anything that's very grand, but I do like the aspect that they are going to be putting in a lot of satire into it too about of our uh, of our um, current uh, political climate. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of my favorite episodes of the season or the series is Safe Room, where. There was like a shooting at ATN and they're like kind of like trapped or whatever. Yeah, so I think yeah. we may get like an extension of that where we kind of see like how their news conglomerate is operated while <laughs> everyone is bickering and going over deals and everything. So, I, yeah, I, I can see that being a pretty goaded episode. There's a, and I can't, there was a, a screenshot I saw weeks ago where there was, or not in the screenshot, in the trailer, there's a scene where Roman's in the streets and it looked like there was chaos all around him, which mm. makes me think that whoever wins the presidency is going to be a very controversial reveal, which I think it might be Connor, dude. Like, I <laughs> think Connor, Connor I was going to win the election. Uh, yeah. He's the Schrodinger's cat. Oh, my goodness. And I got this scene pulled up from the trailer here where we see uh tom talking to greg whispering in his ears that you smash you know he's talking about smashing someone over the head with something which again as we talked about he it, might it, muck it, up. i i but remember that it, it said um information 
Yeah. You, you hold information until it's the most valuable, and then you smash someone in the face. Oh, so man, be, bro. there is something. I feel like there are some things that, you know, some of the cast knows, some of them don't, that we are not Ooh. going to be even aware of and it's gonna hit it's gonna hit i'm ready man so that. Yeah. before we wrap up i started a poll for those that are watching a live chat before we end this uh breakdown uh if everyone can answer a live chat question and and, and for my uh special guest tonight and everyone watching the breakdown put in the comments who was your mvp of tonight's episode i'll throw my hat in the ring i can't believe this is coming out of my mouth Connor Roy was my MVP tonight. Uh, so many great moments, and he's come a long way from finally being under his dad's thumb to really leaning his own narrative. I pose the question to everyone in the chat. I pose the question to everyone in the comments, but I want to know from you nine. And I think my poll, I had Shiv, and you can throw anyone else in the ring, but I put Shiv, uh, Manson, um, Connor, and then I can't remember who else I put up there, but you can use those or anyone. Who Roman. is your MVP tonight? Uh, <laughs> Definitely not Roman. Um, uh, uh, and Tom, Tom Matt, was Vince Gold's uh, jacket is the MVP. Take um, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, Connor really just showed out this episode mm -hmm. and uh, really just like just weirdly happy for him, you know. Just like weird, weirdly happy for him. I think that's a good way to describe it. Weirdly, because he is a weird dude. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and Willa loves his weirdness. So, yes, uh, we're on the same page. I think Connor stole tonight's episode. Uh, and a great quote that Nine brought up earlier. Um, you know, I don't, I, I, you can call me, I'm not a joke because I just need that one person in the room to believe in me. And that was Willa. So, mm -hmm. shout out to Connor and Willa, the, the, yeah. the best couple in the show right now. Mm -hmm. None. This is gonna. We're gonna stay on for another maybe five or ten minutes on the live stream. But for everyone watching the breakdown, thank you for watching our discussion. If you enjoyed the breakdown, hit the thumbs up, share the breakdown. More importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe not only to my channel if you haven't already, but my man Nine. His information is in the description of this video. So definitely do yourself a favor and subscribe. Thank you for watching the breakdown. Again, we're still live. If you guys are watching the breakdown, join us every single night. Every single night, every Sunday, 9.30 Central Time when we break down the episode. So hope to see you all next week. That's going to end the breakdown. A couple more minutes before we wrap up 9 on the live stream, man. I thank you for joining me tonight. I thank everyone for watching us. And I'm going to see if I can find some good comments before we wrap it up, man. Um, let's see here. We got someone saying the preview looked mediocre. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, we must have saw a different preview because that trailer <laughs> looks fire. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we got some commentary on the 90 minute episode, which is crazy. At nine, I can't stress to you enough how I always say, especially for a series finale, go ball to the wall. I want 90 minutes. I wanted, I wanted Atlanta to be a two hour special, man. I just, I, I I'm surprised they special. didn't. Like embrace like this is the last time you're gonna see these characters. Let's give you a finale you won't forget. So I love that they're embracing that, which I don't even know. I'm trying to just think in my head how how I'm gonna handle the finale. Like we're gonna be here at the, I don't I might do it the next day because wow. it's gonna be such a long uh, <laughs> on top of the bear, which it's still I'm such a big fan of Barry and Succession, and the fact that they're going on at the same time is great. But my fandom is so upset because we're gonna be getting two of my favorite shows ending on the same night. I don't know why mm. HBO did. It's bananas to me. Uh, but mm. yeah, the finale 90 minutes is going to be crazy, man. I think that it will be the funeral episode. Uh, and we're going to see these characters. Man, <sighs> so many good shows are ending. It, it sucks, man. And that's it's why I'm crazy. trying to see. I don't even know what's, what's to come on. Well, I don't know if you're a, Sa a Sam Levinson, uh, Levinson fan from Euphoria, but he has The Idol coming out next month. The whole. I saw uh, the preview for that. I was just like, whoa, this is looks. Lindsay or Lindsay? Crazy. I can't think of her name, but Johnny Depp's daughter. Uh, and then the weekend, uh, it seems, yeah. And he, and if you watch, I don't know if you watch Euphoria, I'm a fan of that show, even on it's you talk about toxic. That show is, yeah. Whew, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't living that lifestyle in high well, school. Some, of the, some of the best cinematography on TV, it's though. The most well put, it's one of the best looking shows on mm -hmm. like I've ever, like the, the vibe. It's a vibe, mm -hmm. <laughs> literally, it's the whole vibe. vibe. Really, yeah. It's, it's so great. Um, but he's going to be coming back with his show next month, and outside of that. True Detective. I don't know if you're a True Detective fan. Uh, with uh, oh. season four, uh, it's coming out later this year. Or the, uh, who's, who's the detective? Uh, Jody Foster. Man, she will be. Oh, you know, that's the classic. That detective is. From, uh, you know, go uh, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, of, uh, the Lambs. You know, Clarice is. is yeah. That. <laughs> it looks good. So no, check it out, man. Got the you already sold me on that. Yeah, man. They Jody dropped Foster the trailer. And a couple weeks ago and it looks mm. fire. Uh, so I'm a big true detective fan. So I'm excited for that this year. 
outside of that, man, I can't think of anything off top as far as HBO is concerned that I'm really, really stoked for because a lot of stuff's coming Marvel out. Shows, well, the Marvel shows are like going to be good. I feel. Yeah, like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Secret Invasion and Loki. Um, yeah, okay. But you know, the, this writer strike, man, is really going to muck up some things next year, bro. As far as yeah. you know, the movie and 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 um, you know, TV landscape. And I and I, I stand for the WGA, man. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know if you looked into some of the stuff that they asked for. It's literally like the most simple things that they're asking mm-hmm. for the studios are just being so greedy about. So what I'm hearing now is that, uh, you know, a lot of people were anticipating it lasting maybe a couple months. But now it's sounding like some people are thinking it's going to be like a year that we're going to be in this. Uh, yeah, no, just get them their That's money, gonna be, man. Be, get them talk their about money. messy. That's gonna yeah. Be good. Get them their money. Um, oh, I've got a super chat here. Let me see, Mark. Oh, this is see, you got the we got the experts in the chat. Nine market cap, uh, valuation per uh, price per square X. Well, yeah, I don't even know what that means. Oh, sure. okay. So the 140 to 192 are uh, price per share and not billions. That uh, makes a lot more sense, see, yeah, to be sure. honest. Um, um, but then, yeah, because then we only know the half of the calculation and that's the price per share and i i guess that's like a good way for them to cover the tracks to like not really you know it's not really about the you know how much money or whatever we know that they're dealing with the big figures i just had like a thing i was like how is it possible that they are doing you know making those types of moves overnight Mm -hmm. Like that really wouldn't even make sense. But if it's price per share, that actually makes a lot more sense. Um, yeah, you gotta put me on some you. game. Put me on some game, nine and my man uh, or <laughs> male or female uh, delusional <laughs> NYC dropping the, the nuggets here. I uh, appreciate the super chat and, and uh, educating your boy. I appreciate that. Um, but I'm trying to see is there any more? Twenty five billion, twenty five billion to the cap of what 192 that it was valued at hmm. with atn included um so i could probably pull up my calculator but and while you do that now i'm gonna pull up the uh the poll that we ran i forgot to look up the final results of everyone's favorite quote but i think it was tonight's quote that won everyone over and then the last poll that i had uh actually let me pull it up on youtube <clears throat> so tonight when i had the first poll uh best line from Connor this season 54 percent of the audience said that their favorite quote from him was the superpower line and then 45 percent was tonight's um uh, line and then on the other poll as everyone's mvp we had at 39 percent tom 34 percent connor 15 percent shiv and 10 percent madsen so uh tom was everyone's mvp followed up uh by connor so very, very that is so uh, weird to me <laughs> i'm sorry I'm, I, I'm not saying um you know that the uh comments are wrong but i kind of mm-hmm. am yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't Tom, hey, hey, he he had some. He Tom had some was moments. kissing ass. He was tired. He was oh, like, "Get the hell out of my house! I don't care where you And I and I also saw that um that yeah. So Apple is one seventy three a share. Sorry, I'm like now. Are I'm you good, man? Hey, it doesn't even I'm, make sense. I'm, but um, yeah, I also saw like some comments that were saying that like, oh, you know, this we're not Sorry. giving Shiv any love. It kind of seemed like we were being a little bit, um, uh, uh, you know, because she's a woman or something. What? That, like, Who said we were, that? I was y'all not I, I, just kind of like a little bit Shiv earlier. I literally right. was defending her. We I had oh, nine. Was the chat that she was responding to, but oh, that or that they were responding to, but um, yeah, no, I, I am not. I'm um, to find the comments. I don't see it. Uh, I, I mean, I, if you guys I, feel that way, I, I'm telling you, it, that's not where I came. I, I was literally on the side. I think that, like, you know, Shiv is just making the wrong moves. And Shiv has been one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just think that because she's not able to find an allegiance with anyone, that she's making the wrong moves here. And uh, she she is fucking over Tom. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to see who said that, but I mean, if you guys felt that way, I'm telling you, I I literally said how Shiv. I I, I see where she was coming from, but either way, um, I'm I was, it was a comment that I saw earlier. What was it at? Yeah, pay the writers definitely agree with you there. Um, 
and superpower one yep 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 um but all right man if you guys have any final comments definitely throw them in the chat before we call it a night but nah man uh i saw okay i thought there it was uh, uh silo are you an apple tv plus fan no i did just watch the first two episodes of silo i watched episode one Very... what do you think about it man i'm a sci-fi lover uh, but I'm it's an entertaining. It's a fun watch. I would say that <laughs> is episode two better than one because I wasn't a fan of one. I thought it was very episode two, just slow. So this is the thing. I watched. And it by the way, friend. for all those watching, like it's the Apple TV Plus show. It's a uh, it's dystopian sci-fi show where there's a the world. Something happens to the world where people have to confine themselves in this like. I don't even know how many it holds like 10,000 people. It's a silo and they have all these politics and all these rules. And they, the biggest rule is you can't step outside. And if you actually go outside, you get arrested and they throw you out because they don't want to cause chaos. And they have like this law where you can't have kids and all this stuff. But I don't know, man, I wasn't really vibing with episode one. They were trying to, you know, build that relationship with Rosina. Uh, let, you know? let me, let me yeah. sell them on the cast because it is great it's a great David Oyelowo. Fantastic. Rashida Jones. Great. Rebecca Ferguson. You know, she was the reason uh, I'm watching. I'll be honest. She's the reason why I watch the show because I think she's fantastic. She, she, she's fant she's a very fantastic. Rashida Jones is fantastic. Uh yes. Tim Robbins is in it. Fantastic. Like Common. uh Common makes Logan his Pitt. appearance in uh episode two. Okay. And yeah. I it, it feels like uh the matrix, but like in reverse. Hmm. Especially when you get to uh season. Two. Or episode two. Okay, I gotta, I gotta check it out because, like I said, the episode one just didn't really sell me on their relationship, and I didn't feel I wasn't like it was built on that whole thing of I don't want to spoil it, but the whole her decision it was built on that. And I didn't really feel their relationship was that earned. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, the reason I watched the show is I'm a big Rebecca Ferguson fan, and she didn't mm -hmm. even pop up to the last two minutes of the first episode. So I'm like, I thought she was the lead of the show, and she's just they build on very that. much almost takes the lead completely. That's right. Yeah, that's episode. what I figured. It does feel like they phoned in uh, some of the plot a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I will say this, because um, how I've been ranking shows lately is mm -hmm. like, watch it with a friend. Mm -hmm. You can watch this with anybody or mm -hmm. watch it alone. You know what I mean? I say watch it with a friend. Mm -hmm. There's parts that you could just laugh at. You could just, you know, if you just like it, I, I feel like if all of y'all are here right now, you probably like just talking to your friends about shows and just wanting to, you know, you can goof on it a little bit. You can talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, don't take it too seriously. And it's good. But I might, you know. yeah, I might give it a second shot because I always, my rule of thumb is give, an epi give a show three episodes because it typically plays like a third, you know, a movie where you got the first act. Second, you know, in a third by the third mm -hmm. episode, they, they that's the show, that's where we're headed for the rest of the season. So, I'm gonna probably give it mm -hmm. one more episode. Uh, because I'll tell you what, nine, nah, I'm a big Apple, I'm a big, I don't, you know, not, not sponsored by Apple, maybe one day, but I'm a big <laughs> uh champion about their streaming service. I think they do the HBO approach, where it's quantity over quality, unlike Netflix, where they are very creative driven they let their storytellers tell their stories like i don't know if you ever watched c or servant those are shows that didn't get big numbers at all but they let m night and all those people tell their complete story mm -hmm. even though the numbers weren't that great so and when it comes to science fiction on apple i don't know if you ever watched the foundation that show story wasn't that great lee pace was fantastic in the show but it is one of the most visually stunning shows i've ever seen it is I, gorgeous foundation but i'm also like you know i've read uh that uh, Isaac Asimov books or whatnot, and it, it just felt like really good. I'm yeah. really glad that like all of these kind of like sci-fi shows are yeah. getting their time to shine. So mm -hmm. we're, I mean, or like Dune, um, and uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm. These uh, the old guard of uh, yeah. science fiction is cerebral type. Of, you know, it's not all about the bang, the mm -hmm. shoots, the action. It's about politics and you know the human nature. So yeah, hey man. Mm -hmm. We might have to talk yeah. off screen. We might have to link up for Foundation Season 2. Uh, I didn't know you were and, uh, you, 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 The audience is saying that they did, like, um, uh, White House Plumbers. That's on HBO. First episode's out. It's, like, Woody Harrelson and oh, then yeah, some the, uh, other the, uh, what's guy. What's it called? Uh, uh, fl not floodgate. Um, uh, damn the, it, the Watergate. Watergate. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it looks okay. interesting. You talk yeah. about cash. Yeah, I love Jason Thoreau and yeah, uh, yeah, Woody Harrison. Yeah, uh, yeah it, 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 was brother. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good. Um, and then yeah, of course we got uh, 
uh, Black Mirror. I saw that trailer. Yeah, season that six, looks right? really cool. So I mm-hmm. can't wait to uh, mm-hmm. check that out. Um, but yeah, good to you guys. I'm liking Love and Death. Uh, yeah, Love and Death was okay. Is my it's, girl, it's, it's, man. okay. it's still going. Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. Um, and um, what's this? Uh, I can only think about it from oh, Todd from Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Uh, yeah, Jeff, 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 Jeff. <laughs> uh, actor for sure. Uh, so listen, guys, as you can see, me and I can talk for hours, uh, <laughs> yeah. but we want to keep you guys up too late. We want you guys to, uh, you know, have a good night's rest. Unlike Tom, we don't want you to be going to work yelling at people, uh, like Tom did in tonight's yeah, episode. Tired. So <laughs> before we call it a night nine, again, man, I, I'm so grateful of your time and you joining me on these discussions. Sessions and uh, you know if the time allows it, and if your schedule allows it, we would definitely love it. I say we like there's like 19 of me. I would love to have you back on if you're available, my friend. Uh, but why don't you let the people at home know where they can find you on the YouTubes and uh, what is Nine Nerd Yard and the crew got lined up for this week? Yeah, uh, you can find me at Nine Nerd Yards on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I also got like a discord server where people chop it up or whatever, but, uh, yeah, of course, um, YouTube, if you want to find a lot of my reviews on Atlanta, um, I'm working on a, going to be putting out the call out for a big community Atlanta, um, video, uh, and maybe want to recruit Elliot for that if you're willing. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just going over this. It's in the name. Um, we're just a bunch of nerds talking about TV shows, talking about uh, movies, and that's all I got to say about it. Yes, sir. So definitely, guys, links in the description. Check my man out. Uh, great content with the with the crew over there, man. So uh, we're going to call it a night, ladies and gentlemen. As far as this week on the channel, I am not sure. There's really no big releases uh, but I'm sure I'll find something to talk about. But if not, you'll see us next Sunday talking episode eight of Succession and then, of course, episode six of Barry. So keep an eye out for all that great content. Before you all leave, if you haven't already, just a reminder, if you had a good time, hit the thumbs up. Uh, consider sharing the video. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section, of course, on the replay. Shout out to the replay gang. And then, uh, like I said, guys, if you're not already, consider subscribing to my channel as well as Nine's channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, on that note, like I said, guys, get some rest or you'll end up like my man Tom. Uh, with that being said, guys, you guys have been awesome, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace.